This show is brought to you by CISO. CISO, S-E-E-S-O, is the new ad-free streaming service bringing you hilarious original series, hand-picked classics, weeks of stand-up specials, and more bingeable comedy. Anytime, anywhere, CISO. S-E-E-S-O. And right now, our listeners get a free trial for two months of CISO. You get CISO for free for two months when you use promo code Joey at checkout. So go to CISO, S-E-E-S-O dot com right now to sign up for two free months with promo code Joey at checkout. That's CISO dot com, promo code Joey. This show is also brought to you by Hint Water. Hint Water is offering our listeners a single variety pack shipped directly to your door, including three bottles of Hint's four most popular flavors, pineapple, watermelon, crisp apple, and blackberry, which is normally $24 for only $15 at drinkhit.com slash church. That's drinkhint.com slash church, drinkhint.com slash church. Show is also brought to you by Helix Sleep. Go to helixsleep where you can, dot com where you can buy mattresses online, customized for you for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to helixsleep.com slash joey right now and get fifty dollars off of your order. That's helixsleep.com slash joey to get feel fifty dollars off of your order. Helixsleep.com slash joey. Kick that fucking mule Lee. It's early Monday morning. Uncle Joey, Dean Delray, my Jewish goomba, Lee Syatt, the church of what's happening now, cocksuckers. Kick it, Lee. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with, cocksuckers? It's a whole new week, fucko. Strap a pair on. Here we go. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh shit. You can't stop rock and roll. You can't stop dick. You understand me? Uncle Joey, the church of what's happening now. Early Monday morning, the 24th of October. My main man, Dean Del Rizzi. Man, that song is so good. That fucking comes out firing. Oh, man. I thought about that jam all day today. I don't know why. I was like, I'm not even a Twisted fucking sister fan. But when it comes to that, I walked out of a show one time. You did? Yeah, I was young. I had makeup on. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you. When man. I went to see him the first time at a bar in Jersey, they had makeup on. Wow. And the guy I was with didn't tolerate none of that shit. Oh. I didn't tolerate none of that shit. Oh. We looked at each other and went to Chance Dragon in. Called it a night on a Friday night. That's it. Wow. I, I uh, This band, they just called it, that's it, they ended it about a month ago. They did like three shows in Jersey, New York, and Queens or something, and that's it. And uh, last week I was asked to host this uh, 30 year anniversary of the best club ever in LA. It was called the Cat House, and Ricky Rackman ran it from, uh, you know, uh, that MTV, you know, Ricky Rackman. Where was the Cat House? It was on, uh, there was two locations. It started on La Cienega at this place, and then it moved to Highland uh, at a club called Probe. And it was the hottest club ever in L.A. And it's like where Guns N' Roses play and Faster Pussycat, All Ground Zero, Jet Boy, all these bands, uh, Junkyard, Motorhead, and everybody hung there. It was a Tuesday night club. You had to have a, a $1 uh, like membership card because they figured out if you were a membership, they could turn people away at the door without being... Uh, Rude. Yeah. So... 
They, uh, Ricky had the 30 year and he asked me to host and he booked five bands and didn't tell anybody who they were. It was the fastest sellout last week on Sunset at the Roxy ever. 11 seconds. No one knew who was going to play. So I go and host and uh, at the end of the night, Ricky Rackman scores Twisted Sister. And I sat on stage. I posted some um, footage of it on my Instagram. And I liked Twisted Sister when I was young. Uh, the Stay Hungry record and this record here that Lee was playing, I was into it. But then over the 20 years or whatever, I, you know, I checked out. And I was bummed that I did. When I watched him play this night, I swear, D. Snyder fucking... Fucks it up. He, yeah, he fucking fucks it up. He crushed. He always does Wow, fuck it up. man. I give credit with credit. Is. I, it was just... I was young, and I didn't know what, you know, we yeah. were fucking impatient. I get it. We didn't it. really want to be there, and uh, it wasn't really our scene. So, like, how important to you, when I think of music, since I'm not a huge music guy, I think all that matters to me is the music. How important were those other aspects, the, the costumes, the, the stage, the, like, how important was that to you as a fan? Sounds like it was a lot, very important. No, at that time, uh, I walked out of tell. Oh, yeah. When I saw him play the flute. Yeah, flute rock. I you don't know, like it. I, I, I walked out of a few <laughs> movies by that age. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the guy I hung with at the time, I still hang with him. He's my daughter's guy. You know, he uh, he doesn't have patience for that shit. You know, he never really was a pot smoker. He did acid and went home <laughs> and had a freak out at his house. You know, he never really liked that shit. So it wasn't his. That's why I kind of dug him. I, it wasn't really always my scene either. Right. There were some nights I just want to smoke a joint and just go out. And, he, and I went out with him. I went to, you know, some of our friends went to see Twisted Sister. Let's go down there. We walked in, and they came out and said, Twisted fucking sister, man. And they had makeup on. I yeah. think during the first song, we just looked at each other and tapped out. Wow. There's an incredible documentary. Documentary, yeah, wow. on Netflix. Woo. About how nobody wanted them. And oh. they just, it was just fucking one thing yeah, and after the, the other. One thing after the other. A friend of mine was explaining. And say, and they become, in the tri-state area, before they were even uh, record deal and famous, they started making thousands on the bar circuit. On their own. No one would give them a record deal or anything. So they're like, fuck all you guys, man. And they just selling out everything all over the place and, and eventually become the kings, man. And I think that's around 84, that, that Stay Hungry record. And, and uh, D. Snyder wrote all that stuff. And fucking, man, that guy, you know. He had a vision. They were way into New York Dolls, and I never got into the New York Dolls, you know, and that was their thing, New York Dolls with some Kiss, you know, and I liked Kiss, but not New York Dolls, but Twisted Sister Boy, there was a time they were the biggest band in the world with that, I want to rock, rock yeah, man. that fucking thing, with that guy was in the that, video, was, what do you want to do with your life? That was 84, was yeah, it? I think so, yeah. All right, Dean. When you when you were in a band, yeah. and I guess you guys are both com comedians, so it might be the same. When when you are get to that pinnacle of like you're the biggest in the world, do you think you think it's gonna last forever, or do you do you think even like if they like all you always hear about one hit wonders? Do you think they know like all right, this is probably like only like do you think they prepare for it, or do you think they're just delusional the whole time? Well, I think that um, if it's so fucking hard. It's a zillion to one to get where some of these bands got. And you got to know that you can only be there for so long. Now, if you're delusional, you're just all on drugs or whatever. But uh, Dee Snyder is a very smart man. He parlayed that into, what are we looking at, 30 fucking years right now on a band that probably people thought would last, you know, a week. You know, so to me, that is still, they've made it. In my eyes, if you go out and you could sell out like theaters and shit right now, thirty years later. Oh yeah, that like that doesn't sound like they've failed at all. No, how, how many bands got a record deal, taped the first album, and fell apart? Oh. You have no idea, Lee, the stories of this. The same stories that go with comedy. Nobody knows. You see Gabriel Glaces. Why do you think Gabriel Glaces every night's a picture of him in a theater with people? Nobody goes out on the road like Gabriel. And if you talk to Gabe, he'll tell you the same thing. This ain't going to last forever. Yeah. I'm going to get a piece of this. Well, he's very smart about it. He knows exactly. There's some people that go into it. Then you have people that go into it with their 20s. Everything falls apart when they're 30. Nobody knows who they are. And they still walk around with that fucking attitude. 
Oh, that's crazy, right? That's like, crazy. You know who I am? You know who I am. That's fucking crazy. Well, if you had Shit. 10 years of that, like, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Like, I, I almost, you almost understand why it happens. Music, comedy, acting. It takes a certain thing not to fall apart. And some people have fallen apart. Britney Spears fall, fell apart for fucking two years and came back. The little chick, the Disney chick. Oh, Miley she, Cyrus. She fell apart for two years and somebody had to pull her aside and talk to her. Yeah. Uh, this cut Justin... T, T, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Bieber, whatever. Everybody has a point. You know, Guns N' Roses. Yeah. I remember Guns N' Roses on national television on heroin. Nodding. Yeah. Smoking a fucking cigarette at the podium. Like, they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. That's my... When I think of Guns N' Roses, I think of that. That's how big they fucking were. Like, they were walking around fucked up, Lee. I mean, drooling, heroin, blow, yeah. alcohol on their breath, cigarettes on a fucking building that said no cigarettes. We don't give a fuck. What Guns N' Roses? Yeah. We're sparking. You know what I'm saying? You want to give me a ticket? You want to arrest me? It don't matter. We'll be out in an hour. In an hour. You know, so there's a certain mind thing that goes with it. Well, you probably have to have that certain mindset to get to that level. I would assume. Look at Axel, Axel Rose went off the deep end. How long did he disappear for? Now, yeah, 15 years. 13, yeah, 13, 15, 15 years. 15 years, he went yeah. to Arizona and was living with a guy that was reading stones to him and shit. Did you read that in Rolling Stones? I mean, Lee, you, God knows where your mind goes. Can you imagine any way you go, girl wants to suck your dick? You go to that wet restaurant for breakfast, that waitress, she wants to suck your dick. Her kid loves you, the band. You know, she'll do anything for her. For, I mean, that, 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 that's just one of the perks. There's I no can, manual. I can't imagine. There's no manual. Yeah. You know, we. Ha I would love for, for, you know, they talk about all this virtual reality. I would love to go and hang with Zeppelin in 73 for six months. That'd be great, right? And see how long it would take you to go to rehab. <laughs> oh, yeah. How yeah. long would it really take you till you went to rehab, you fucking pussy? <laughs> These people, I think they go off the deep end. John Bonham died in 79. That party started in fucking, since he was three, he was drinking like that and playing the drums and your blood pressure, you know. That, yeah. that thing doesn't stop. It's crazy, man. It's like I was talking to you about that blind melon, you know? Uh, it's like, here's this band that had, they put a record out, it flops, totally. And then MTV starts showing the Bumblebee video. You know, like, hey, this is a cute video. And in, in a three month period, they flop to three million records. Like, they, they, they think they're done. And they fucking crush it. Then the singer gets on fucking drugs. And, and he can't break it. He can't fucking break loose. They're sending him to rehab. They're trying to fucking help him. They're trying to fix him. He writes a second record, which is monumental to me. Like, this record is crushing. He dies three months later. I saw him a week before he died. You know? And it's like, it had to just spin him out. Like, you got to think, like, you're from Indiana. Like, he knows Axel. He sells three million records. He's living in Hollywood in the eighties, nineties. People are in the "Don't Cry" video. At in the, the end. "Don't Cry" video. At the end, was that not yeah, him? Yeah, that's him. And uh, you know, they were like, they were like, Allman Brothers meets Jane's Addiction. And this guy's lyrics were deep, man. I was reading him today because he died Saturday, thirty-one years ago. I was like, this guy. Thirty-one. Thirty-one years ago. No. Or 20, 21, 21. Uh, sorry, yeah, 95. 94, yeah, yeah, 94, 95, yeah, 95. 21 years ago. Um, but it's just crazy to think, like, how people, you know, they just, you, I don't know what grabs you, you know, you're just out there partying, and the next thing you know, it grabs you, and you're gone, you know? You can't, you know, you look at Springsteen's longevity. You look at the Stones' longevity. Yeah. Don't tell me the Stones didn't have fucking problems. Oh, man. You know, they had internal problems and drug problems. Look at Aerosmith. Oh, man. Lee, Aerosmith. Take Aerosmith. Yeah. It's like I so told you, I'm in, I'm, when they did the album Rocks, they were so high, they didn't even talk to each other. They just lived in the same house. Cool. And set what time? We'll be down there at three. Don't go down there at three. <laughs> from three to five, I got the studio, Lee. Don't go down there from three to five. They were, they, your addiction takes you to this place. When you signed up for this band, you just wanted to make records and make a little bit of money, maybe, and play and meet some chicks on the road. Yeah. And here you are, Aerosmith. These guys were dead. For anybody who doesn't know the Aerosmith story, they died in 1979, 
and nobody heard from them till 85. But now you're like, Joey, so what? Bands do that all the time. No, 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 no. I'm talking about at the time, they were the cream of the crop, and they fell apart right in front of you. Perry left. The other guy left. Yeah. Tyler was on a fucking heroin bender. He couldn't sing. It was a fucking horror show. Oh. It was a horror show. And look at somewhere along the line. They released Done With Mirrors, which I lit on fire. Oh. That's just a god awful album. I love that record. I, there's two songs on it I like. I remember, and I threw the cassette away. I'm like, I'll never listen to this shit again. Wow. Then the rappers put them on the fucking song, yeah, and they yeah. blew up the top, and they came back yeah. with all that music. Yeah. Is it my favorite Aerosmith music? No, it's not. But I'm happy they got back together. It was a piece of my childhood, you know. Yeah. We've seen all these people, and you ask yourself the same story. Comedians. You know, they go to Montreal, they fucking get the deal, they yep. come here. You know, this is this moves fast. Oh. This is fast moving, dog. Yeah. And when this hits, this hits. One minute you're doing Googles in fucking Missouri, and the next minute you're gonna call to do the Toronto Amphitheater and it's sixty two thousand seats, sixty two hundred seats, I'm sorry. Yeah. And people are gonna pay forty eight dollars a fucking ticket for you, and you're like, Are you serious? Yeah. And you're still doing that same fucking, you know, you could fall apart anyway, Haley. Ego has a lot to do Ego with it. Ego has a fucking big part. A of it, it, like, you can say uh, drugs, but it, it's it's always ego for the internal battle uh, between. I was just reading this thing. I couldn't believe it yesterday. But when, they, when Maiden first got Bruce Dickinson and they do Number of the Beast record, it fucking, they shoot to fucking the biggest and and steve harris the bass player his thing was i'm always in the front in the middle and bruce dickinson was like third show in like hey fuck this guy i'm the singer he started going over and just fucking smashing him over like you're over there dude and they and, and steve harris admitted they got a number one record out and he's like i'm thinking of firing this guy ego because he wanted to be dead center in the stage. It's unbelievable when I'm reading this. Like, who's heard of a bass player dead center? You know what I mean? As you know, I'm an emotional guy, and I get emotional with dumb shit yeah. sometimes. And my internal mind, sometimes you're just pissed off for two days, and you go, what am I pissed off about? <laughs> yeah. So the other day, I go, what the fuck? I'm not doing that. Let me go buy some albums. I go down there, and I see, I see 10 great albums that day. But two albums jump out at me, Synchronicity. Oh, yeah. Synchronicity turned my life around. I was in a fucked up spot in 83. That summer, I was a burglar. Yeah. I was going to college. I was working as an electrician. And that album used to soothe me. I don't know what it was. Yeah. That and The Pretenders, Learning to Crawl. Awesome. At that time. And I got Regatta the Blunk. Yeah. All right? And I got The Stones and Made in the Shade. It was one of my favorite of all time because you don't stop. The fucking album just don't stop. I like albums that don't stop sometimes. Yeah. And I'm on my way home. One of my buddies calls me from Jersey, and I, I, I had we, we had been missing calls for a couple of days. And I called him back, and he goes, "Where are you coming from?" And about it, listen to how pissed, listen to how much of a child I am when it comes to music. About a week ago, his brother, the guy I'm on the phone with, his brother flew out here and met with another guy from where we're from, from San Diego, and they went to those concerts. No, oh, yeah. Now I grew up in this kid's shed of music. And we used to have arguments about music and shit. The one that came out of here was older, Anthony Avillo. And he posted a picture of Pink Floyd on Sunday night. Oh, yeah. Of, Roger, uh, Roger Waters. Yeah. And it says, Dogs. Oh. Tremendous. And I fucking get furious. Oh. If you play Dogs, David Gilmore better yeah. be on that stage, okay? <laughs> if not, don't do it. You're just killing me. Don't fucking do it in front of me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I'm driving. I'm thinking about all this shit yeah. on the way home. And I, and I tell him, I go, you know what, Steve? Your fucking brother went last week, and he posted that picture. Fuck him. Uh, and he goes, what are you talking about? And we tell me, what are you talking about? I go, no, for, I go, you know, I can't. There's two people I can't stand in the music business. I yeah. can't stand looking at them. And that's A, Sting. Yeah. And two, Roger Waters. I really cannot stand Roger Waters. Every yeah. time I hear him talk, I want to punch him in the fucking mouth. <laughs> and for years, I, I liked him. I really liked him, and there was one thing I don't like. Yeah. When he did that thing on VH1 and they talked about Roy Harper yeah. singing that part. Oh, yeah, yeah. What yeah. song is On this? Uh, Money, right? It's Money. Is it mo no, is it, it's, uh, no, it's um, uh, wish, Which One's Pink. Wish You Were Here. By the way, no, Which from, One's Pink. No, it's from Wish You Were Here. So it's got to be it's a, yeah. some melody from that album, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. No, it's um, something. It's the one. Uh, 
Fuck. Oh, man. I was, we were just talking about just, it, you and I, and I never knew that Roy Harper sang that ever until like three months ago. And I was like, wow. It was, uh, and something weird. They had to take him out of like He, he just yeah. couldn't hit it. Yeah. He couldn't yeah, yeah. hit it. It, 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 it. An hour. Yeah. An hour, Roger. Yeah. An hour. How long is this going to take? <laughs> and he couldn't hit it. So they sent him out. Roy Harper was next door. He never got paid. I know, yeah, that's oh, you have a cigar. Have, have a, a cigar. cigar. That's it, go. yeah. Yeah, by the way, which one's pink? He says that in Something there, right? Like that, yeah. yeah. By the way, which one's pink? Have a cigar, you're gonna go far. Isn't that weird? Because Something crazy. He couldn't hit it. It sounds just like one of those guys. Roy Harper came in, nails it, and when Fucko comes back, yeah. you know, now they interview him then and now, and he's like, uh, you know... Uh, Right there, I just fucking, a whole thing of hate came over me. Because I knew Pink Floyd just didn't break up yeah. because they were four geniuses. There had to be a fucking reason. Yeah. And that's, he said, uh, whatever sang it, but till this day, I think I still could have done a better job. Well, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you, punk. <laughs> Fuck you, punk. I love Don Felder. Yeah. Okay, I love Don Felder. Yep. There's a big deal with them and the Eagles that on not the long run, yeah, he was going to sing a song on Hotel yes, California. Yes, and they took him to lunch, and they take yeah, the song with yeah. Don Henley, and that cost them their fucking life. Like, <laughs> but again, you you're not going to pull it off. They eventually let Keith sing. Keith yeah. Richards, when you hear Keith Richards sing, you want to shoot yourself in the head. You know, you're like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Before they make me run, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But you know, yeah, give him the song. He wrote 18 fucking hits. Yep. What's up, Lee? You always hear. Comedians want like wish they were rock stars in a band. Does everyone wish they were the singer? Because that like or the like because I've never. I, I think everybody wishes this. they were the star, okay. not necessarily the singer, just the main guy. You know, that's how it gets into that. I think you know what I mean. Especially with drummers because they get such the short end of the stick. They got to fucking. They got to play drums. The fucking physical and shit. And then at the end of the day. They don't get any glory unless you're, you know, of course, Bonza or Keith Moon. But And, and then they, they get cut out of royalties because they didn't write the songs and all this shit. And that's why I always get drummers on my podcast because without a good drummer, the band, is, it, it sucks. I'll show you every band that's great, they got it starts with a great drummer. You know, that's the bottom line. So you got to fucking keep that guy happy, man, because the chemistry is there. It's weird, man. When you got chemistry of four guys... You can't just go like, well, us two, we make all the money, you know? It's just, it's just, it's going to blow up. That's crazy. I never thought about that, how drummers do get caught up. They do. The music business is just as ferocious. It's gross. As any other fucking, and people think that it's that glamour thing, and you still get robbed somewhere along the line. Like, there's oh, always God. a theft. Years ago, I don't remember, like, I, and I said this on this show, somebody lived in the building that was on tour with Limp Biscuit. Yeah. They were opening up for Limp Bizkit, and they were telling me their story, that they don't get paid on the tour or something, or yeah. the, uh, the album sale, something just that I sat there and said, what? Yeah. You guys don't get two grand or something to open up for Limp Bizkit? They're like, no, we get like per diem and something else. We make our records online. I don't fucking know. I was like baffled. And you took this deal. It's crazy. Called a 360 deal. Where the record companies, they figured out, well, nobody's going to buy the records anymore. So we're not making any money on these bands. So what we got to do is do a 360 deal, which means we get a, a piece of everything in the pie. We get a piece of your toy. We get a piece of your T-shirts. We get a piece of your, uh, if you're on TV, uh, we get a piece of your songwriting. We get a piece of your record sales. 360 deal. And it's fucking gross. You know, it's, it's just insane, man. But that all trickles down from people stealing records and everything, you know? It just, uh, the, the big wigs, they're not going to give up their cars and mansions. So where do you think they're going to get the money? They're going to keep digging until they get the money to keep the, the fucking, it's not to keep the lights on, it's to keep the fourth car on and the fifth house. And the, you know what I mean? It's, it's insane. I never, I, like I said, I, I, that was one part of me. I'm, I'm an only child, and that shit runs yeah, deep, like, too. psychologically at times. Yeah. You know, I was I always bust Lee's chops. Lee always says to me, well, 
I'm thinking about my girlfriend moving. I go, Lee, I've known you from the outside. And I, I could tell that you're a really personal guy. You don't like people touching your shit. He's yeah. never had a roommate situation. I'm the same Since way, Since I've Jerry. met him, he never had a struggle and go to meet Joe. I live yeah. with three guys and shit. He always opened his home to you. But I could tell that at the end of the week, as long as he, Lee knows you're going home, he's happy. Like, yeah. this ends like in a week. You could stay on my couch. Lee, you only child too? No, I have a younger brother. Well, um, how, where does that stem from? You know, I, I've always been... For me, the, the the thought process of always wanting to be the star, yeah, is so foreign to me. Like I I it, I can't even comprehend it. I just I don't know. I don't want to be this. I I never wanted to be the center of attention. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm shy. It's just who I was. It made it made me uncomfortable. I wish I always wanted to have more friends and be more liked. Yeah. But it always it like. When I found out that people in college would come and knock on your door and just come in, yeah, I'm like fuck, fuck that. There's like I like I don't want anyone just knocking on my door. I want people to call before that. I didn't like that at all. So like I I only lived on campus for a semester. Like, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't deal with it. It was uh people would knock on your door. Like, well, they they would they wouldn't I, they they would there a little bit. But the reason just I, at the dorms. Well, yeah, I just moved off campus because... Let's like, say I was a pot smoker. I'd yeah. knock on your door later. Fuck, no. I know you're holding some sandwiches or some salami. <laughs> so. I you know, you know, I think it's funny because I'm an only child. I'm 50. And um, it's funny you said that because recently I was like, man, maybe I'll, I'll move to New York, you know, because I've been going a lot lately. I was there all of August. I was there last week for eight shows. I'm loving, I'm loving the stage time, and I really want to become... A, a, a better comic and and part of me uh, my whole life everything about me is from being an only child but also it, it has the bad side of well New York you gotta get a roommate and I'm just like <coughs> fuck man I, I just I can't live with someone man it's just it's so fucking weird cause when I wanna go to sleep I wanna go to sleep and when I wanna be awake or play records I wanna be and 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 it's like, am I willing to sacrifice my comfort to become a better comic? You know what I mean? Well, there's, here's the roommate situation. Yeah. Okay, so we get an apartment. We got a two-bedroom. You know, you're two doors apart, right? You, you, you're trying to save dough. Right? Yeah. 1500 You want to get 750 out of somebody. Totally. And you get like a girl in there or a friend of yours in there, you know, and they party or whatever the fuck. See, that's... Where it ends bad. Yeah. You know, if you don't right, party absolutely. right now, let's pretend I got a house. I got a three bedroom fucking house. I got a back room in the back. And I know that Dean is struggling as a comic. You know, 500, as long as you clean the kitchen, Dean, listen, do me a favor. You're not going to see me. Yeah. Unless you hunt me down on the other side of the fucking crib. Yeah. And you have your own garage and you have weights. As long as you clean up and all that shit, I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. It's the people who you walk downstairs and they're smoking in your living room. Oh, and there's yeah. three strangers in your living room and they got beer bottles and you see the foot and you know they're about to kick the fucking beer bottle. That's in, exactly and it's what got I'm a, talking and about. And it's got a cigarette butt in it, oh. which is disintegrated. And you know, you know that shit, look at how I tell you. I describe the situation exactly. to you. Exactly. I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of that shit. Yep. I've lived on couches. People always extended fucking courtesies to me growing up. You know, but when I had a roommate situation, he was cooler than fuck. His name yeah. was Jimmy Burkle, God rest his soul. We lived together two or three times, and there was never, I never, I would never bring somebody over. Yeah. Like, I would never, yeah, he had a girlfriend, he would go to her house. Yeah, that's where I would go about. somewhere over there. Sometimes. That kind of I, shit, right? You know, you leave town, he watches the dog. He leaves town, you watch the dog. Yep. There's always some fucking thing to do. That's a great, he's a professional, you're a professional, everybody pays their rent. Yeah. Nobody's doing blow, or at least they do blow. They do it once a week in their room. Yeah. Shit like that is fun, you know? Sometimes totally. to come home and to talk to somebody for 10 minutes, it's kind of fun, oh, especially if they're not a comic. Right. It's great. It never worked for me. I didn't have that many of them. I only did, like, you're right, I never had a roommate out here. Um, but in, when I had roommates, if they weren't my friend, it was great. Right. Like 10 minutes saying hi, maybe watch a TV show together, have some dinner. But when I moved in with people who I knew, that's when you're fucked. It ended up in in hate 
They start pushing buttons. They know they can get away with stuff. Like, oh, man, why are you so uptight or whatever? That kind of shit. That starving roommate shit. Unless everybody's cool and on the same page, yeah, it never works. It's yep. great for a while until somebody, a friend of theirs moves in. Yeah. And then your shit starts to miss. Your shirts are disappearing. Totally. And you're like, fuck. Yep. Now I got to smack a motherfucker. That's a bad situation. I, I've, listen, I, I was a single. I was an only child. I had like my own bedroom growing up with my own TV, stereo, remote control, yeah. had a cable in my room, I had an air conditioner in my room. All that ended when my mom died. Now I had to sleep on a bed with a guy. Yeah. When I lived with John Bender. We had a double bed. Uh, we slept together. Two 16 year old, like two fucking fags with the yeah. window open yeah. and shit. Yeah. You know what that's like? That was that was against my whole culture in oh, 16 yeah. years. Then I slept on couches. Then I went to fucking prison. Then I got like a fucking apartment. I, I didn't get an apartment on my own until I was like fucking 20. Yeah. I went to Boulder. I got my first fucking apartment, which was basically a room with a mattress, a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. I got a TV after a while. I got cable. But besides, I didn't know nothing about fucking nothing. I had been sleeping on couches all my fucking life. And yeah. Shit. I'm a, I, I lived in a warehouse with uh, another band member where we rehearsed. So I, I lived in the office of the warehouse and then he built like a wooden loft inside the studio and he slept in there. But he would, he would do a little fucking marching powder and just fucking practice guitar all night. Not plugged in, but I could still hear it. It'd just be like... And after like four hours, I was like, dude, man, you got to fucking stop. You know what you I mean? You could hear him? Yeah, because it was really quiet in the warehouse at night. You know, we lived in an industrial area, and you could just hear it picking, just, and he would just try to learn stuff, Metallica, you know, just like that low. But I would have to get up working construction at like six in the morning, and I'd be like, oh, you know? And then this stuff just wears on you, man. It's just like, it's tough, man. I mean, it's like, you know. It's uh, it's stupid complaining about it. And with me, guess who my worst roommate was who? of all time? Yeah, my mom. Oh, no class. Oh, your mom. No class. No class. No respect. Oh. We had just this conversation the other night, Lee, I, and my friend. No respect. No class. Actually, woke me up when I was fourteen with a girl downstairs. Come <laughs> down and meet her. Dance with her. That type of shit. Yeah. My mom would knock on the door and go, no, there's people downstairs. They want to come down, dress up, come down. I would come down, have to talk to people four in the morning. They'd oh. be all fucking coked up and yeah. shit. I'd be giving out hugs. They'd be giving me 20s and shit. <laughs> My mom would bring me like a Cuban sandwich from the uh, Cuban place down the corner. And then the, she was rude. Yeah. Or she would cook at four in the morning. People come over and she'd cook. Loud laughing. Loud laugh, loud music. Yeah. Rude. My yeah. mother was rude. Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I went home about, not this time, like maybe three times ago, three, four years ago, I went home and I went to see a, a person that had grown up around the house. And she goes, you know, when I think about your mother, I think of one night, like in 1970. She goes, my kids were fucking young. You know, she goes young. They were like 14, 11, 8. And he goes, I heard my husband, Renee, your mom and your stepdad come into my house. And your mom's tone in her voice, she thought it was one in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, right. She goes, that, and he goes that's the night I understood your mom. Like, I always liked your mom because she didn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, she just didn't give a fuck. I had the same scene, man. A lot, I, I a lot of late night that. parties at my oh. house, you know. Just Carol King on Sunday morning, you know. <laughs> That, that meant the all night bender was over, the Boone's Farm and the fucking uh, Colombian weed and the fuck, you know what I mean? Just the. I remember my mom, we lived in this house, man, and uh, my mom had, she had a, a, another woman living with us. The woman died in a fucking Corvette car crash, drunk driving. This chick named Cindy. But we had like a roommate. You know what I mean? Like an adult. My mom had an adult roommate. Like, you know, so it was like another person living at our house because we were just, we, you know, needed to make ends meet. And it was just, it was just weird. Like, I, I think back in my childhood, you know, I said this, I said this to someone recently. I was looking at some paperwork my mom sent me and there was a stepdad I didn't, in there I didn't even remember until I was looking at the paperwork. It's like, holy shit, I forgot my mom married this guy when I was like five. 
maybe six. How long were they together for? For like a year, you know what I mean? I completely don't even remember that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's just like, it's just it's just wild, man, when you, when you look back at how everybody, the people, uh, my friends that I uh, see how they grew up and then how I grew up. I love how I grew up, but it was uh, pretty fucking, uh, she'd be out a lot, so I'd be alone. That's why I don't think I can deal with roommates. I learned to, to be cool with being on my own. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I love too. it. I love it. I, I do love too. It. The only child shit, I would wake up at six, and that meant I would be alone for like three or four hours. Yeah. And that's always been my world. Like last night, I got up at five. This morning, Sunday, yeah, I got up at five. I was up for two fucking hours before anybody got up. Yeah. I smoke some dope. I drink some coffee. I take a shower, you know, and yeah, it's your own little fucking world. You put on some soft music, you write a couple fucking segues for your jokes, you look yeah. over your podcast, whatever. Yep. I've always enjoyed, I love, I, I tell you what, guys, I like going to movies by myself. Me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. I, Me too. Oh, yeah. I've been married twice, and uh, I've had girlfriends, and i got great friends, but I think at times my best friend has always been my solitude, and I'm embarrassed to say it. Listen, there's nothing better than me going for a movie by myself. And before I go, I roll a joint. I got a Chinese, one of those lunch specials. Yeah. Like the movies used to start like at 12, 15. Yep. And you go to the Chinese restaurant when it opened at 11. 11 for 30, you got your little fucking lunch special, little shredded fucking beef with yeah, the pot white stickers. rice. Some fucking pot stickers, an egg roll, and you went to that movie by yourself. Because I realized that sometimes, and this might be selfish, Lee, meet me at the movies at 12, 15. All of a sudden at 12, 15, I got a fucking call from Lee. Yeah. I'm three blocks away. The lady in front of you know, and I'm not saying Lee. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, your yeah. Name. I get it. It's it. It always works out like that for me. Late, you know, or oh, you're late at the chat. Listen, they talk I, during the movie. I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't give a fuck if you say oh, something during the movie. I'm too high. Yeah. I won't even hear. I'm deaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm deaf when I turn yeah. the deaf button on. That's ah. the least of my problems. You know, I yeah. make sure I sit next to the door. At that lemonade the gate comes with me. One of these art students comes in there shooting. They gave him a D in fucking uh, design. I don't need to be shot by some fucking art student with a BB gun. Yeah. So I sit next to the door, but. I love that shit. And, Me too. And I heard that people who eat by themselves die. Like they die of heart attacks or they die younger. It looks like I'm going to die younger. And I'll tell you why. Because first off, when I eat, if I see Lee or the ranch, I'm already upset. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And if I'm a general for years, I wouldn't say nothing. I, in, in my mind, I go, look at this mutt. Like not only does he owe me twenty five fucking dollars, mm -hmm. not only is he a fucking mutt, but on top of that, he drinks ranch dressing. Yeah. Like I'm judgmental. Yeah, this shit I don't want to know about you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how you eat. I don't care if the food drips down your fucking face. Yeah, it's what you invite to that fucking table that depresses me. Okay, like if you eat hummus or you order like a bad entree at a place, like I expect you to be <laughs> to know shit about this place before we go in there, right? <laughs> and I know you know the entrees. I like I like the places where people look at you. They look like a fucking schmoke. And they look at me at 300 pounds, and they go, Joey, when I go in that place with you, what should I eat? And under pressure, they crack, and they get the worst thing on the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I this fucking good look uh, over here. Uh, no, I they don't. They crack constantly. Uh -huh. Let me get a, a, a pool boy. Listen, get the fucking gumbo and eat the, rub the crab on your face. I've never had gumbo before. Ooh, the, oh. well, this is, but you had the crab. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I can have a conversation with Lee. He'll tell me where he's going to lunch. Oh, I'm going to his place, and... And all of a sudden I go, how was it? I don't know. We decided to go to this other place to eat dumb. And I don't understand none of that shit. So before it, it affects my fucking lunch. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before you order pizza at a bad fucking place. Yeah, In yeah. front of me. and Because that'll ruin my movie. Yeah. Now I don't want to even sit next to you at the movie theater. <laughs> like that's how upset I get with all yeah. that shit. So I just avoid it. You never brought food into the movie theater? Like you said you stopped at the Chinese place? I would stop at the Chinese place but I'd bring it in. Listen, if I smell your disgusting dumpling at the movie theater, oh. I will take that chopstick from you and I will stick it right in your tit. You understand me? That's the gross. That's the gross. I don't uh, want to smell food in a fucking just, movie Because food always smells like foot in a movie theater. It on always a movie smells theater, like a foot. On a plane, people uh, yeah. have no idea on a plane oh. how bad that fucking McDonald's smells at 8 in the morning. Oh, oh no, dude, wait. I was I was flying first class once. I got lucky, uh, and and then they were like, oh, yeah, you're upgraded, and I'm first class. And, and on comes uh, 
Michael Bolton. He was uh, married to that star uh, that was on uh, like just Dallas. Or one something. of those shows, yeah. So they come on, and um, it's we're flying to uh, London, and I, I just sit down. I get my fucking headphones on. I'm ready, and they whip out their McDonald's, right? Like nuggets and all this shit in first class. And then they must have been like on some sleeping pills or something. As soon as we took off, they fell asleep in the McDonald's. The bag. The shit was just rolling around in first class on the floor and stuff, and it just smelled like fucking death, you know, like just foot. It smelled like foot. You know, the onions in McDonald's, like those onions grown like in a radiation farm. No. Oh. Like the onions at McDonald's. When yeah. you eat the onions at McDonald's, they have a different taste of them. <laughs> if they touch your skin, it's like getting fucking Hindu sweat on you. You'll no. never get that off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like getting fucking disguised. It's something yeah. that you yeah. cannot describe. It's what a- happens when you get no disrespect to Hindus. You know I love you motherfuckers. When we were kids one time, it's a long story. But anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, what the fuck are we talking about? The, the onions at McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. So people don't know that those dehydrated type onions reek differently. Even like White Castle. Yeah. Like, you don't know what life is till you wake up in a room where they had White Castle. Oh. Like, so, like I had a, he wasn't my roommate, he was my brother. And this motherfucker used to bring White Castle home and eat it. And I'd be sleeping. And I'd wake up in the morning and I'd look around that room and the smell between your pants and your shirt from the bar. Yeah. You know, because we grew up when people were allowed to smoke. Yeah. So when you walked into a bar and they'd already had the smoke in it from the night before, Plus 80 people smoking a fucking cigarette. Even if you didn't smoke, you'd walk out of there next oh. morning hungoverly. You don't know what life is, Lee, until you're hungover. You get up, you go to put your pants on, and you could smell the cigarette coming wow. out of your pants. And I used to sh- hang my jacket in the garage. In the gar- guys, it's fucking horrid. Oh. Thank God they stopped smoking in those places. Oh. Anyway. One part of me is like, you know what, man? I hate to be... I would... Listen... Why have a cocktail if you can't fucking smoke a cigarette? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking out for the fucking guy who goes out and does a bump of coke. I don't want to fucking leave. I've tried to do a bump to go outside to smoke. Yeah. I don't want to do that. That's yeah. annoying. That's fucking annoying. Especially if you get a little paranoid. You're outside, like cops are out there now. When you're in a bar on coke, you feel like you're in the submarine, uh, like in a safe zone. I would wake up in that basement apartment at a little window for ventilation, and between his feet, my feet, the jeans, the shirt, and the white castle. Oh, God. It was fucking horrid. Just a would, shit stew. He would get onion rings to really make it bad. Those oh. fucking, you know, it's just all that stuff makes me sick. Yeah. So as I got stronger in my life, you know, I mean, I, I remember in Seattle, I, got, I went to call for a roommate situation. The girl I was dating was a fucking nightmare. And one afternoon, I go, you know what? Now I'm going to do this in the middle of the month. I got to stop what the fuck I'm doing and go look for an apartment with no fucking car. Wow. And I'm asking Josh Wolf for rides. And I remember going to one place that was great. The only problem was the guy had like a great name and he had shit oh. everywhere in this fucking house. I'll tell you how bad it was. As the guy was showing me the room in the corner, that was a piece of shit. That had dehydrated from one of those nine inch <laughs> horse shits to like yeah. three inches. And he didn't pick it up before the roommate came over to look, check it out? Nothing. And I Whoa. and I said, you know what? That's fucking weirdo there. And, and I go, you know what? Yeah, I'll move in. Oh. I liked the place. It was really accessible to me. How yeah. was it? Something. Something. I went, I got my bags. I went over there, I put them down. This fucking room, this house, every, the, the more I walked, East from that room, yeah, it got worse oh. and worse, and it was like the people, the horse was pissing, yeah, and they would let it lit, sit there for three days, yeah. and they pick it up, and finally I looked in the living room, and sure enough, my suspicions, there was a puddle of fucking piss oh. that they had left, you know, and I, I, I uh. went, I got my bags, I think I called Josh Wolf, yeah, and I go, Josh, you gotta do me a favor, I can't live with this fucking kid, why oh. not? And when I lived here in L.A., oh my God, when I moved here in L.A. I, me and the girl broke up, and there's always one of those things. You break up, and now I got to go get a new pad. Yep. And some guy at the comedy store that, that I kind of knew from the comedy store was like, man, me and my wife just broke up. This is the perfect room for you. I go, where is it? He goes, it's like on Vermont. Oh, yeah. And good, Wilshire good or something. Error. I go, yeah. what? He goes, yeah, you're going to love it. Oh, my God. 
I get over there. It's one of those. We don't have air conditioning apartments. We just open the windows. Oh, right there. Fuck you. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I go, can I even put it on, up on an air conditioner? He goes, no, no, the building's too old, so the thing will br blow. That's why we had to take them all out. Mm -hmm. Wow. The circuits will blow. And he took me into the back room, and it was just fucking disgusting. Did they try to lie to you? Like, we opened it, and there's a great yeah. circulation. Oh, they always say that. I remember a chick told me that when I first came here. Uh, I was in uh, Silver Lake. Place was blazing. She goes, we get a nice, cool breeze off the reservoir. It's like... What are you talking about? It's only 70 out right now, and I'm fucking burning up in here. No, 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 no. I, at one point, I don't know what happened. I had a roommate up to 19, maybe, in the comedy game. Listen, when you get here, when I first got here, I lived with a girl. Then we broke up 80 fucking times. She was a dirty whore. We <laughs> broke up 80 fucking times and got back together, so it was always a dilemma. So for a while, I just lived on Josh Wolf's couch. Yeah. And I threw him a little cash. I bought groceries from time to time. You're a fucking feature act, bro. Yeah. You know, but in those days, it was a $200 plane ticket to New York. Oh, yeah. 200 flat round triply. Right now, 249 Virgin. I've been flying it nonstop. Really? 249 I signed up for their, like, uh, their, their uh, notices. And they'll just hit me. Sail tomorrow for two hours. I'm grabbing these flights. Two forty nine. Round trip. Round trip, man. It was two forty nine. To Newark? No, JFK, dude. Come on. I'm flying from LAX to JFK on Virgin twice now. Two forty nine. You got it. You get your number in. You register as a frequent flyer. <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, signed up as a frequent okay, flyer. Okay, so next time you fly, <clears throat> now, yeah, buy a ticket for two forty nine. Yep. and then tell them you want to upgrade to main cabin select, not first class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Main cabin select. I saw it. For, it was like forty nine bucks to up, upgrade. You're crazy. Great, great. That's right? where the pimps will sit. It's fucking great. If you're a real pimp, yeah, and you don't want to fly first class, you ain't got the pocket. You buy a cheap ticket at Virgin, register. Yeah. You fly a lot. On, if you fly a lot, always look at Virgin's routes. It's great. Register, and then just buy the cheap ticket, and then the night before, 12, hour, 12 hours before, yeah. even if you got to get up at 3 in the morning, who gives a fuck? You get up 3 a.m., boom, call them, and go, I want to upgrade to main cabin, select what do you want. Give me an aisle window, boom, that's a great bargain. It Why is, not? dude. You sit there, you don't, get off, you don't get up one time. They give you quality food. Oh. You press a button. There's movies. There's they got the this. killer lighting. The killer that purple lighting. Yeah, lighting. yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, always oh. become a frequent fly on fucking Virgin. And you know what? Their flights are difficult sometimes for me. Yeah. Like, I really wanted to take them to Boston. They only go to play like five places. They wanted six ninety nine for Boston. Wow. Well, I think they got my cookies, Lee. Because they wanted yeah, they nineteen ninety nine for first class. Whoa. I always look at... The regular ticket, I look at first class like, and see what the difference is. Yeah. Delta wanted like seven and two. Some plane tickets are cheap. The weirdest thing was I called Delta, and Delta had a plane ticket when I had to cancel for oddball. Yeah. But they reused it, and they said, we found some other money, so the ticket is free, and we owe you a check for $13 to what? Boston. Wow. So I'm going to Boston for fucking one eight. I don't know how I scored it. Wow. So now I think maybe they made a mistake, but not Delta don't make mistakes, bitch. They don't make mistakes like that. It was too much of a mistake. So and I keep checking it. No, and it's that Virgin's real. great, man. Fuck, they got a flight on um, uh, their red eye is at eleven thirty at night. It's great. One thing I like about Virgin is they only have a few places they're going so their flights are never late you know they show up that leaves at 11 30 so you get there you get into new york at like uh 7 30 their time in I the morning yeah slept the whole way that is not a bad time to it's get into new york not at all it's perfect especially if you could eat breakfast at jfk and that's like, what i did get who the fuck you think you're dealing with yeah that? right because you're gonna have to steam it out anyway yeah your luggage is gonna take 45 minutes yeah yeah you your hotel's not gonna be ready no 7.45, yeah, that's a long fucking wait for your hotel, though. Now, I know, but you know what? I call ahead the uh, day before to the hotel, and I say, look, I got a meeting. I need an early check-in, man. Come on. And and I'll give you a shout-out on the podcast or whatever. Uh, uh, one of the guys in New York was telling me that uh, dudes tell the hotels, look, I got the big podcast. I'll give you a shout out or whatever. And they say, all right, yeah, in the ch early check-in. So I got a, I got a 10.30 check-in last uh, last week when I was there, and I was like, this is great, you know? 
I was only in a hotel one day, and then Ari let me stay at his house while he was on the road. So it's just perfect. Perfect run, man. You're living a good life now. This is nice what you're doing. Oh, I just... You're 50, you're going, you're trying to become bicoastal. Just, listen, you got to do what Ari does. Just eliminate the winter in New York. That's what I'm doing. That's eliminate what, eliminate yeah. the winter totally. in New York. Come, you know, because June is great in New York. Yeah. May is sensational. Oh. April is tremendous. September is brilliant. Oh, I was o there last week. Yeah, October is brilliant. Oh. October, September in New York City are brilliant. You can it's still incredible. move in, light jacket. Once November comes and that cold weather, the, and I know these guys, it gets like warm in January. Joey, it was 63 today. It's January, bitch. February's still around the corner, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> never fear Rome. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The snake lies coiled in Naples. Fuck. You know what I did? Uh, I was with my buddy Marcus Price, who works for Hannibal. And uh, he had two Italian scooters, mopeds, the ones with the wheels, the 70s ones, those crazy ones, you know? the pooks and uh he said yo i know you love coney island so it's sunday it's open it's a 75 out he goes let's ride these out from brooklyn we rode from brooklyn to coney island surface streets like a beastie boys video just seeing all of brooklyn pull up to fucking to the cyclone parked them locked them up rode this fucker two times took some photos got back on and rode back in this perfect weather and then did spots at the stand that night i was like this is fucking great you know yeah. like life is good man you know there's uh there's a couple parts to comedy and i know that there's a couple parts to music you know i yeah. know that there were bands that went on, on tour for two years didn't stop touring and recorded while they were on the fucking road then one day there's a thing called the kid yeah. And you're like, listen, this is ending with or without me. You yeah. guys could keep going. Yeah. But I got to go home and make a pit stop for a few weeks and see the kids and whatever. And you totally. really, you know, so there's three levels to this. At this point right now, let's pretend I lived somewhere like Tennessee where I had Terry's parents there all week and Terry was entertained with his sisters. And you know what I'm saying? I can leave for a couple of days. I can go leave. Let's do a Monday. Fuck it. Yeah. I'll get on the red eye Monday night tonight eleven thirty. Do six on a Monday and get the fuck out of here and spend a week in New York. First of all, I would miss them too much at this point in the game. Yeah, yeah. Like I would miss I like what's going on right now. I like my road, how I keep it. It's very simple. I'm not trying to kill myself. Yep. I'm not trying to prove nothing. You know, we were talking about ego before. We're talking about Roger Waters and how to this day every time I see Sting in an interview, I think of how he took one of the gr world's greatest band down. Because of your fucking ego, and, yeah. and and you think of you know, Roger Waters is is as war with everybody, and I think about Mick Jagger. He's as egotistical as they come. Totally, but he's like business is business. Yep, bitch. yep. You know, business is business. Yeah. You know, and and even in comedy, I I I've never let myself get into that dumb shit. I keep that out of the way, man. I yeah. took that out of the way as a young man. I got that shit out of the way, ego. There's no reason to have ego. It's not gonna fucking do nothing for you, you know. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I go and I do some shit that who gives a fuck, bro. Yeah. I'm just trying to be funny and have a good time. That's all I'm trying to do too, man. That's it. Yeah, that's why I'm doing New York a lot because let me ask you something about this, Joey. Because I I don't get to talk to a lot of guys that work as much as you do, like you know Burr and Marin and you and uh, and guys like that, but. I find that uh, as I I travel around, does this happen to you where your stuff works a lot of the time, but then you'll get to some rooms and your stuff's not working? It's like medium laughs, you know, just the uh, and somewhere around thirty minutes they're kind of out. Does that happen to you? Absolutely. Is that for headlining? You mean? Yeah, yeah, headlining. Absolutely. Lee, we've had discussions, Lee and I, mm -hmm. of what happens during a special. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 20 years ago, when you first started watching specials, you took a ride with the special. You took a ride, but always remember, at about the 30-minute mark, yeah. shit starts coming into your mind. Where's my daughter? Yeah. Am I going to do the homework tonight? That's where all the other sensory shit comes into your mind. Totally. And you disappear. Now it's up to the comic. 
you know, how many specials do you watch? Rate rate ten specials. Yep. Whether it's Andrew Dice Clay, Delirious, take a George Carlin one. CK. Take whatever. CK, take Pryor. At some point, no matter how funny they are, life comes back to you. Yeah. The coke wears off. Yeah, yeah. The joint wears off. Yeah. Well, the comedy, you don't get sucked in anymore. The excitement. And somewhere for eight or nine minutes or ten minutes, you lose them. Now it's up to the comic. It's up to the comic. Now, what made it? Listen, we all headline at the six-year mark. Yeah, that's where I'm at, right? Okay, but you say to yourself, you know what? I was pretty good as a headline. No, you're not. No. Nah. Wait till you get to the 10-year mark and you're a little bit better in the 15-year mark yeah. and then the 20-year mark. Like I tell people, I didn't, became, I didn't become a headliner for 17 years because I didn't become a headliner until four years ago. Yeah. And I'd been doing comedy 20 fucking years. And I didn't become a true headliner where you have them. And, I, and now you be, you become a professional. You, you're a boxer. It's a 60-minute bout. Yeah. Okay? Which means I got to have endurance. Yeah. I got to learn how to keep range in the fucking... This guy's dangerous between the fourth and seventh round. That's why I start to taper off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta get momentum again in the fucking eighth round. You know what I'm saying? So, this is what becoming a headliner does. Yeah, it teaches you when to be aggressive, when to bob and weave, when to stay back, make believe you're entertained. You just got him. You just playing a magic trick. You see this right hand? It's a magic trick. He's looking for the. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you beat him up again, and that's it. You get the fuck out of it. Yep. Wow, that was amazing. No, it really wasn't. Big closer at I the was, end. Yeah, yeah, something to knock story the in the middle. Out. Yeah. Something to lullaby. Always make acknowledge the waitress. Acknowledge fifty two fifty. I just had two drinks and a fucking bag of nachos totally. and that disgusting hummus. Yeah. So that goes into your mind now. How am I gonna figure this out? Yeah. Is this piece of pussy worth it? Was this comic worth it? You know. So now you got another bump there. So you got about twelve minutes to fuck with them. Yeah. Now you open a can of whip ass, huh? And to be honest with you, that's what they're gonna remember. Totally. It's the last. Kind of whip ass. Yeah, the last. Me. So it's pretty impressive getting there and getting that bob and weave. Listen, for this special, I didn't know how to have a closer. Yeah, that's what you were telling I me. I had to talk to them. Yeah. I just talked to them. Why not? Why fuck around and give them something that ain't? Yeah. For a year and a half, I had a great closer that got stronger and stronger and stronger. But because I did it so much on the road, I didn't want to be put it on a special. I felt like I would insult people if I had showed up with that fucking material. Wow. So I didn't do it. And even today on the road, I will hit you with 45 minutes of new material. Yeah. But I used that closer because it was a joke. We all had a great time from the podcast. And a lot of people that start liking me is because of that story. They they ex acknowledge that story. Right. So Lee was Tony Bennett, cocksucker. Lee dog. He's got shit to do when people to see fucking yeah. Dean Del Rizzi. <laughs> oh, fuck. Spotify won't let me play this song. Hold on. Jesus, Lee, you're slipping. You should have been on point with this. this is no, I have, I have it already. But... Watch the bag. You're breaking people's earlobes. Oh, there. shit. Sorry. These people are going to complain. Fucking Dean Del Rizzi fucked up my fucking earlobes. <laughs> he grabbed the water. Thanks for having me again, man. No, we got to do you once a month. I, I was going to call Rainin. I forgot to call Mr. Bazio. He's been doing a lot lately on Facebook. Yeah. He's got a little band going on. It's pretty impressive. To, listen. Yes, Lee. You're... Always gets me on a Monday, cocksuckers. Four or five years we've been doing this podcast, we stay consistent to Tony on a Monday. Tony Bennett. To pick up the what do you think you're dealing with, Lisa? Yeah. When Lee, how's that acid? It's going pretty good. You yeah. feel it? Uh, I'm starting to. I feel little chemicals in my stomach. Yeah. I feel like I got a fart. I had a big lunch, that so first it's taking acid a fart bit. might take you. Acid fart. Lee's in much better shape this time than last time. Oh, that was strong last time. Last time, time Linda Blair came and visited him. His head was turning backwards. That was a lot last time. I loved it. Oh, we that was a, fun, though. We, that was, was just yeah, the yeah. first dose I gave Ooh, you. Oh, yeah, fun. We're going deep in 10 minutes. <laughs> so before that happens and I lose it completely. No, nah, I'm just teasing. Uh, no, well, before I lose it completely, regardless, because we have a lot. <laughs> Dean, you, you said you uh, work construction? Yeah. I know Joey did, too. I... There's they're rebuild they're building a, a place across from my house. They're building a new house. Con I don't know what it is. Right. But it's pretty. I've gotten to see the whole process. Like they tore something down, they got the thing level, 
and then they've they've been building level by level and it's i'm not good at that yeah and just like normally i don't look at it but sometimes when i'm stoned i look at it, i'm like it's pretty cool to get to like see like you're doing something like there you're building a house i hated it uh, but it was the only job that you could have with long hair back when, when i when i was young i was telling people this there was three things you couldn't go in disneyland with long hair there was a rule like no men with long hair like you know uh and you couldn't get a job, so it was construction or or uh, landscaping or telephone sales. Those are the three gigs you could get with long hair in, you know, the 70s, 80s. Man, now, like I always say, I don't even think I got enough tattoos to work at Chipotle now. You know what I mean? But I remember when I got one tattoo, my mom was like, you're never going to have a real job. And I was like, good. You know, and she was like trying to scare me. But I was like... Now at Chipotle, they got a, they got the menu on their neck. You know what I mean? It's like, holy shit, the world's changed, you know? But I hated construction because it was like you had to get up at like five. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure it sucks. I'm sure it sucks. Like I'm sure there's a lot of people who listen who work construction. I'm sure yeah. it's not fun. A lot I mean, of people love it. Well, I mean, they, they, yeah. they take pride in their work. I'm sure it's like very hard, but it was just it's just cool to see the whole process. I yeah. loved it. I yeah. loved it. I loved it. And the messier, the better. Oh, yeah. I was a stonemason in, Bo- in Aspen, Colorado, up in high altitude. You get there, you got to take a tarp off the brick, and there's three inches of snow on it. You got to take the tarp off the fucking concrete. You got to take a tarp off the sand that's held down by cinder blocks. All right, then you got to get a bucket and turn that around, and you got to fucking get a machine and get that, put gasoline in the thing, yeah. and then get that fucking started. <laughs> And that's what you hear. And then you get the hose. You throw it in there. You throw a fucking scoop of rocks in there. 16 scoops of rock. A bag of 80-pound fucking concrete. And fucking 16 scoops of sand and shit. Or whatever the fuck you make. I'm sorry. <laughs> no rocks. You would throw like one thing of rock in. 16 scoops of sand. Yeah. And a bag of 80-pound concrete. And then once it was great and mixed fucking up there. Three, three and a half minutes. You took it out with your hand. You looked at it. You gave it to the stonemasons. Then you had to empty it, make another one, empty that one, make another one, and while you were emptying it, get four wheelbarrows and sand oh. and shovel four fucking wheelbarrows and then run them over for each stonemason, empty them and bring them back, and then have his fucking bricks cut up. So I would have to have the whole row of bricks for him, especially whether he was left-handed or right-handed, all set up for him with his tools. Yeah. All right, I would have to have that, like, let's say the job started at 8, I would have to get that seven thirty and do all that. I was a lone warrior, like a like a pre med. Nineteen guy. years old, stone to the gills. Yeah, with a fucking Walkman on, with those thick speakers, with the cushies. Oh yeah, yeah. With a fucking hooded sweatshirt, a hat, a fucking winter jacket, gloves with the fingers cut out. Some Judas jeans, Priest going. Some Judas Priest going, and I'd go out there every morning, start up all that shit, and then Lee, why are you doing all this? You mm-hmm. still got to build scaffold. So you're building scaffold for the other side. You're cleaning off all the rocks. You don't want ever in your life want somebody to go, Joey, more mortar, cocksucker. Oh, yeah. That's embarrassing to yeah. a guy like me. You yeah. shouldn't have to tell me to do fucking mortar. Yeah. So the mortar always has to keep coming. You're always scooping. You know, you're looking at the end of the day, you've picked up 30 bags 80 fucking times. You know, and I did that with roofing. The only thing that made me quit construction was money all the time. Yeah. Money, at the end of the week, you looked at it and you said, you know what, I helped a bit. Now, 30 years ago in this country, you learned to trade, Lee. Totally. So once I grabbed you, the first year was going to be 8 bucks an hour. But after the first year, I give you 12 15 you know what I'm saying? You get some tools, and the more you show me is the more I show you. If you want to come to work and pick up paper, then come to work and pick up paper. Good luck. But if you're going to come to work and go, uh, boss, can I put that TV up today with fucking Dean? Yeah, put it up. You're just saving me 800 I could throw you an extra yardstick. You follow me? Yeah. That's how you make money. And you get in there and lay the brick and learn how to do that. They were schmucks that <laughs> they'd be giggling. Man, last night that was a great party last night. Like, what are you talking about? They're giving out union wages here and you're behind us talking to bricks, smoking cigarettes with this idiot, talking about Twisted Sitsa. Yeah. What to get in there? Go pick up those bricks, you dirty cock. Fuck yeah. I got that. I was framing. It was piecework. So you got paid by how many fucking sticks you put up, man. You know, we What they pay in those days for that? 
fuck, I can't remember, but I think it was around 30 an hour you could make, you know, if you were fucking moving your ass. And, and we had a team, four of us. So if one guy was lacking, the other dudes would be on you like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, because they were only there to make money. And if you were just like slow, you know, because we're like, we'd be going as a team and we're building condos. So it'd be four of us and we're building this whole section of these condos. And, you know, and the faster you work, the more money you made. And to me, man, most of the times I'd be hung over, played gigs the 14 night before. 14 hour day. You didn't oh, give a fuck, man. Yeah, just fuck. Anything to fuel that addiction. Oh, yeah, man. Anything to fuel that. I did that. I remember being... 18 and committing a crime and the rumor was they were looking for me so my friend Kurt DiLorenzo God bless his soul took me down to uh, Glassboro and I lived with him for like six weeks and after three days you know motherfuckers like us we gotta get out of the house Yeah. and the first thing I saw when people are looking for you you have to get out of the house? I was two hours away from where the action was yeah. Who was I going to bump? Pre-internet. Yeah, this is pre-internet. You know, <laughs> People like, didn't go past I wasn't going to bump into Dean. Let's take a picture. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know, you put on a hooded sweatshirt, you kept yeah. walking. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's awesome. I'd rob somebody. Something happened. This was like, uh, this was before we did, no, this was after Colorado. No, 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 no. I'm lying to you guys. This was before the jewelry store. I, I robbed a drug deal, and they were looking for me. So, like, for about uh, a couple of weeks, I just went down to Philly. Yeah. My Everybody kept asking me, what are you doing in Philly? Going to college. I wasn't going to college. I was living on Kurt's couch, watching TV, smoking great dope, eating cheesesteaks, lifting weights with this kid, having a great time. I don't even know what the point of the fucking story is. And I, oh, the, after three days, you yeah. know, you sit there, the coke wears off. The bullshit wears off. You know, you're staying at somebody's house as a guest. He's cool as shit, but you're not going to ask him for 20 bucks to get weed or to eat. So you got to make a living, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, let me get up and walk around and see what's happening. And I bumped into these dudes that had a conveyor belt. And they were looking up at the sky. It was the coldest day of the fucking year. And these savages are looking up at the sky, and they're putting 80-pound rolls of roofing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the tar paper. The tar paper yeah. they're putting on the thing. And I just happened, you know me, I'm an asshole in heat. I go up to the guy and I go, hey, man, you guys looking for help? And he goes, what can you do? And I go, I could do this. Yeah. And he goes, are you that strong? I go, look at me. I'm a fucking 19. I'm an animal. Yeah. And he goes, I'll pay you 12 an hour or 75 a day. It was really weird. I go, fuck yeah. Yeah. He goes, when do you want to start? I go, let me go back and get some work boots. I'll be right there. In those days, work boots was my main shoe. That's how I kicked windows. Yeah, work right. Work boots and shit. I didn't have a hammer or nothing. For about four days, he made me do that shit. It was a nightmare. Oh. Just pick up rolls off a truck, put them up there. They, this was a huge roof. Yeah. This roof went on for days. And the guys on the roof, I felt sad for. Oh. Because they had to get a truck, put the rolls on it, and then carry it for the length of a football field. Oh. Because you couldn't go back there with the trucks. It was something real weird. There was trees or something. You could not go back there. So they wanted to start the roof back there and work themselves this way. No, oh, so they're walking with the eighty pound rolls. Walking with the eighty pound fucking rolls on a truck, three of them pushing like fucking slaves. Oh. It was a horror show. Then I got promoted to up there. Up there wasn't bad if you took the thing off the roll. Yeah. And you put it on. Let me tell you something. I lost fifteen pounds of baby fat. In two fucking weeks. And yeah. I made a little money, and you ate with guys, and you bought lunch. Did I see a future in it? That's what scared me. Going, yeah. I got to do this when I'm 50. Oh, right. Come pull up with my truck with a warm cup of coffee. Yeah, because you always see the foreman. And you can see him. They're like, oh, hey, Dean, grab that for me. Will you? And you're like, that guy's body is destroyed. 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 And, and I, listen, it's how this country got built. Totally. I have nothing against them. I just, yeah. I did the electrical trades. I did fucking all, every type of construction from fucking, uh, I got a job once spraying buildings with that shit. No. Oh. The fucking uh, stucco? Yeah, the stucco. Yeah, they yeah. paid. I did that for about two weeks. I did everything. I did. You know what I did, man? I, and, I, and I actually kind of like this one. I did it for about three years. Uh, the giant mower. Driving the mowers for like, uh, you know, condo uh, lawns and football fields. And, and uh, it was uh, commercial landscaping. 
but it was it, it wasn't putting them in it was maintenance so i in the morning put the fucking the thing on my truck it was amazing like i didn't know how to do any of this stuff the guy hires me and i'm out driving a truck with a trailer on the back you know you gotta you gotta learn how to drive that shit you know it's opposite and then get somewhere and mow this fucking massive field you know in the sun and then load it up go do another one i did that for a few years man and i like that because i was i was by myself what just like you walk man you know i loved all that shit yeah i got a job one summer doing that shit where you they call it landscaping <clears throat> but it's really excuse me it's really uh digging eight inches and putting a pipe in with holes in it peripheral yeah. pipe i forget what it's called don't, right. don't be mad at me construction guys and I did this all over Aspen. They were building something. I can't remember what it was. And this guy was paying me great. Like Irrigation this, lines? You like put that shit in? But it was small pipe. Like mm-hmm. I don't remember what it was. Two inch, three inch, four inch perforated pipe. Right. It's called. So the water leaks out of it or some shit. And at first, the guy, at that time, everybody paid you 10 up in Aspen. He started me at like 12, and he shot me up to 15. And he goes, listen, do you mind if I leave you alone? And I'm like, what do I need you here for? Yeah. And watch me do what? Dig and go all the way down the block with this pipe all day? I got a Walkman. I got a bag of reefer. Yeah. And I got breath mints. I can be here all fucking day. <laughs> I'll be here from 6 a.m. When you're that young, what do you give a fuck? Totally. I did everything those years. Everything. I yeah. tried everything. Wallpaper. I couldn't get at my eye. That cocaine eye I got, the drifter. Yeah. My yeah. right eye drifts is between the stroke and the cocaine in the fucking early youth. I couldn't hang the wallpaper straight. I mean, I did it all. I was painting. <laughs> I painted for a year. I painted. I, I was a great that. painter. I didn't yeah. mind that. T- again, leave me alone for an, three yeah. hours. Give me a thing. Up. I got the best job I had was a snowmass village for VPM, village property management. My friend said that they would hire people to do piece work at your own rate. They would give you a list, your own personal list, and you would look at it, and, they, and on, on it would be like $900 worth of work. Yeah. So it was up to you. When did you want to pick up the fucking check? They had the paint in front of the apartment. All you had to do was go in, tape. So I would do the same thing on Saturdays and Sundays. I would fucking do that, but case other joints. That's when I was a burglar. Yeah. I'd know the fucking motivation of the people when they left, when they came back, because all the apartments were together. So I was there for like two weeks. I would watch, 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 make little notes and shit. And after the paint job finished, ba boom! I hit them about a week later. Nobody knew nothing. Because <laughs> yeah. if you hit them while you're there, they know yeah. it's you. Oh you, yeah, yeah. You yeah. eyeball yeah. them while you're painting them. Yeah. I'd wake up a week later. Nobody knew nothing. I knew they had a back door. They had a cat. Whatever the fuck they had, I knew. Lee, how you feeling over there? I'm feeling nervous about any worker I see now in my apartment. Always. Oh yeah, yeah. Always. You know always. what? I, you know what I had? I think this job got me. Uh, this job got me into. Uh, performing was uh i was selling magazine subscriptions in front of supermarkets uh and they pay you by how many you could get so me and my buddy were there and people would be walking up and be like hey man uh we're running half off on magazines right now and you just show them this flyer pamphlet and it had like every mag on the planet tv guide people fucking you know us magazine rolling stone spin everything and you get guys to buy it was so absurd in front of grocery stores for like five hours a van would just drop us off and then come pick us up. How many you get? I sold 20 of them, you know. And See, once you get I just, 20? <clears throat> oh, yeah, this no. motherfucker was, we could sell anything, Lee. Yeah. Lee, once we get the rhythm to something, you're dead. Yep. You're dead. And I knew how to spot certain people. I, once, I was always a construction guy. I was a construction guy till about 1984. Then I dabbled in bartending. Yeah. And then that, that I don't know, there was something about bartending. That bothered me deep down inside. I gotta be honest here. Yeah. I always thought it would be a dream of mine to open up a bar and serve cheese steaks and have my leg on the ice machine. Archie's place style. Yeah. And I'm like, that's that's just I don't wanna listen to that. I don't wanna be in that if mom and then somebody introduced me to sales. Well, the first time I got introduced to sales really was on my own when you sell n- newspaper ads, when totally. you deliver newspapers door to door. I think that's the first time you got to knock on people's door and go, let me ask you a question. You only get Sunday. Why can't I give you the whole week and save you $2, $2 a month? You know, and you're like, okay, can, yep. you, can you bring it up my stairs? If you bring it up my stairs, I'll buy it right now. Okay, done. And that was it. I made a note on the fucking thing. Bring it up the fucking stairs. You're 12. Paper wrap. 
a paper route. You learn how to sell, but you didn't know the ba- you, you weren't no fucking Luke Feldman. No, you, you're not selling the ABCs of selling. Yeah, and then somewhere, oh, I don't think cars was the first thing I sold. There was something before cars I sold. And I always thought it was interesting, but I always thought we were a ripoff. I always thought salesmen were a ripoff. Well, sales, it's really weird to me about sales. Like, you sold cars. I sold uh, Harley Davidsons. And it, it, everyone thinks you're lying to them. So after a while, you start feeling like, man, am I like a piece of shit here? You know what I mean? Because they're like, come on, man. I know you're fucking, you know, you could do... Uh, the, every time they think that you're getting totally rich on this last deal, and they think that, like, you're no matter what, no matter what you do, they think this guy's ripping us off. I swear to God. Isn't it crazy? Like, sales, because you got to be a little bit, like, hustling, you know, of course, to get somebody to buy. I've never seen a guy just walk in and go, yeah, the red one's great. And they go, all right. And they sign up. You have to be like, I like red because fucking, you know, it just shines. It looks great or whatever. And and when you give them that, then they're like, this guy's full of shit. It's so weird sales, right? Well, it's not that you're a bull. There's people who are out there in the cell and, they, and they, they're pieces of shit. When I sold cars, I actually took offense to those kind of salesmen. Yeah. They're just pieces of shit. They cheat on their wives. The oh, yeah, fucking, yeah. The people come in, they sell them a car, they, they they hit on the guy's wife, and then two months later, they disappear. We, we had this conversation the other day about a guy named Rick Visser. The guy I learned from that, that, that he, he stood at the same fucking dealership. Yeah. Since 19 fucking 87. Wow. And now he's making millions over there and he don't do shit. He sells cars by appointment. Wow. Know? Everybody thought they had him all those years. But it's so weird. Like, uh, well, I'm going to tell you what I learned selling that changed my life. Yeah. When I sold sports information on the phone. Sports information? Like uh, bet stuff? Like uh, In tips? 1991. 1989, 90, I worked at a car wash as a salesman. When you came in, hey, Dean, what's going on today? Listen, Dean, today I got the special. Yeah. Give me nine ninety five. I'll take care of everything. Throw me an extra two dollars, and I'll do armor and all. Yeah. And I made a Hot commission, wax. and yeah. it was a tremendous living. It was a tre- you want me to tell you something? That was a great living for me. Yeah. If I didn't become a fucking thief there, partner up with the cash register shit, I would have probably still been there. Yeah. Because legitly, legitly, I was making three hundred a day there. Yeah, that's working, fucking great. Working money, nine right? to three thirty. Yeah. Come on. And standing that kind of outside, money- not even bending over. They didn't even vacuum a car. Yeah. I didn't even vacuum a car. I stood out there with my jacket on, with my sunglasses, getting the fucking sun. I would take them off to look at people. And I go here, and I made it real casual. Yeah, yeah you can buy the basic for four ninety five. What are you a fucking mutt? Nah, they come in and I go uh, listen to special. Thing. I was always selling nine ninety five, but seven ninety five no interior. Yeah, in fact, give me six ninety five. Let's do no because I still got the same commission. As long as I sold, I got the same commission. It didn't matter what I sold it for a dollar. Cost them twenty five cents. Yeah, what do they give a fuck? Sometimes I negotiate that way. Listen, what. What is the armor all? Three dollars? Give me fucking a dollar. Give me yeah. a dollar. Yeah, a dollar. A dollar, okay? Yeah. And make sure you tip the fucking guy. You know, that wasn't what made me a salesman. Out there, I met these dudes. I would meet these dudes. And they all had nice cars. And they were all from New York, Long Island, New Jersey area. And they would always go, hey, how you doing? After two or three times, we become friendly. Where you from? Oh, here. Yeah. Pizza, this same bullshit. But they yep. were nice guys. They weren't involved in drugs. And I started asking them, what do you guys do? And they're like, we work up the corner at this fucking place and we give out sports information. It's a great job, man. These guys were making bank, Dean Delray. Wow. And after about a year, I bumped into one of them. They go, hey, man, we've been looking for you. You want to come in for an interview? And I went in, I went into the trainee program, and it changed my whole life. It changed my whole life. It looked. It changed my whole sales life forever. Your style? They did. They teach yeah. you something? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. This was something that these guys were basically street thugs that were intelligent, that got a pitch and made a science behind it. Right. I didn't. Did I like their style? I, the, the, the two guys I worked for were brothers. I really enjoyed them. Their partner really bothered me. 
their partner was in Long Island or whatever. He was a fucking a douchebag. Right. But these two guys I worked for were sincere. I really liked them. And they just taught me stuff that blew my mind. That today I use. I use in my regular life. And I think back to them. And I, my relationship with these guys didn't end too good. And it was all a misunderstanding, you know? Right. And there's a guy from that group that helped me out a lot that I wish I could hunt him down and uh, repay him some of the money I owe him. But it was just a, a weird time in my life. But these guys broke sales down to me, Dean Delray, down to a fucking science. Wow. I was maybe 30 years old, and they reprogrammed me. Until today, ask Lee. Lee, when I tell you to go pick up the 15 grand, Lee looks at me with his mouth open. That's what these guys taught me. They taught me like, you know, uh, Dean, what is the Florida Improv paying you a week? 1200 Grab the fucking phone, you know. And all of a sudden this guy calls and all of a sudden he's getting you $3,000. And you're like, what the fuck was that? Wow. Did I leave 1800 on the table or is this guy a good fucking salesman? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? How, how, are, they, uh, how are their uh, tactics different? Like, it was a science. Yeah, it was a science, and, and you had to be a fucking knowing what I know now today. I could disappear and do a hundred grand a year, probably. Wow. My friend Danny B, who's called into the show, he probably does two hundred grand, three hundred grand, four hundred grand a year, probably doing this. Wow. But he works. Selling sports tips, betting bet tips, talking to people, getting information, paying for information. Yeah. Getting information. What is information, Joey? Information is little fucking things, okay? There was a fight I watched recently, and I liked the way the turnout ended. I didn't complain about it. But somebody told me recently that the guy lost that bad because he, on the weight cut, he oh. had passed out twice. Wow. One time he passed out for so long that I actually thought about calling an ambulance. Wow. That's not good when you're fighting. No. If you know that information, how much did you pay for that? Yeah. You pay 5000 but now you got to find somebody so you can make 50000 Right, right. That's the secret. Now, are there people scamming out there? Yeah. There's people who are running game and running these poor degenerate gamblers down. Listen, the degenerate gambler and the shit I was doing for 27 years, snorting coke, yeah. has no differences at all. No. You're just robbing, stealing, clawing the fucking... Uh, get your adrenaline fucking going. That's all it is. It's two different fucking highs, yeah. but the same cat. You know what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. the same magician, yep. but two different tricks. So it's amazing how he attacked him. He yeah. had a TV show that came on Friday night. Like pay, he, on, on like public access? Four guys. Me, yeah. you, Lee Syatt, and we get Theo Vaughn in here. Yeah. And Theo Vaughn and you and me and Lee Syatt just argue. <laughs> and talk about this weekend yeah, in sports. Well, yeah. last weekend, what'd you make last weekend, Dean Delray? Joe Diaz? Seven grand, man. Last week, while you were at home jerking off with your baby and your wife, you know what I wrote down? The college football, I wrote down $225,000, okay? And that was net. And I put in six power moves, and I, I went six for seven, you know. Yeah. I bet every team for $2,000 scientifically. But there was one bet I made for all the money I made the day before. You just have a spiel. Yep. At least I asked the Jew in heat. Listen, fuck you all. Last weekend I made $300,000. Where the fuck were you motherfuckers on one power play? I had the Atlanta Falcons getting four points, and I sit on there. And all of a sudden we just sit there, and you give out your 800 number. Yeah. Dean Delray is here. He went four for four. Call me now. Let me give you the same topics I have. People are fired up. I'll They're give like, you a These free... guys are fucking winning. So now, here you go. You call up. You're the kiss of death. You can't pick a winner. It's your mom's birthday next week. You told her you'd take it to Aruba. You still haven't purchased a ticket. Oh. The last time you checked, it's three Gs. Ah. Your mother's dying of cancer. The chemo's killing her. You told her you'll have the money. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're, you're down two Gs. You got a twelve hundred in the bank and you got seven hundred on your ATM card and you got a card that's wide open with fifty thousand cash that you have to come up with a code to fucking snap. Well guess what? Just give us the card. We'll get the code. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Take that card to the Mirage in Vegas. They'll have the code like that for you. Within minutes they'll have that fucking code. <laughs> 
Man, I know, I'm, I'm so glad I was never a gambler. You that shit will take you. That's why women are going nuts with gambling now. There's yeah. casinos and whatnot. So now you call me and go, hey, how you doing? I just saw your ad on TV. Yeah. And it says, you if you I call in right now, you'll give me the free pick. Yeah. All right. What would you bet last week, Dean? What's your name? Dean, Dean, how yeah. you doing, Joey? I'm not one of the advisors. I'm just going to talk to you about something. What did you bet last week, Dean? Oh, I lost $300. That's what I lost. I only bet $10 a game. You're bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, they give you, they, they, you gave me your number. That's the end of your phone. Don't ever think you're going to recover that phone ever again. Yeah. These are real old school Jews. Yeah. They will call you every minute of the fucking day <laughs> in the middle of whatever the yeah, fuck yeah, you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, these you haven't real, called in, man. It looks, it looks like 49ers, people, you know? <laughs> no. So you're like, okay. So why am I giving you this number? Because the guy's going to call you back with your free pick. Why can't you give it to me? Because I don't fucking know it. Yeah. Just give me the goddamn number. You're down money. You want to win some money, right? Yeah, give me the fucking number. 323-444-4444. Three, three, four, 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 four. All right, call me back. That's it. You just signed your death warrant. You might as well gave us your social security number. That is like, oh. that phone number is debt. Yeah. Debt, especially today. I can't even imagine. What they could do for you with the Google and the emails and the Facebooks. Yeah. I will fuck your world up until you call me back. You understand me? Wow. Every time you look at your Facebook and be a message with me with a big dick. <laughs> Even if you block me, I have 18 different accounts. <laughs> to a t I'm paying a guy 500 yeah. a week just to open up fake accounts. Coming at you with dick pics. Yeah. You're going to have to take care. You're going to have to get rid of your Facebook page <sighs> with your 1,200 pictures of you with Led Zeppelin smoking dope with Rickery Rackman at the fucking Viper <laughs> Room. You have to get rid of all those pictures, but yeah. fuck no, you're gonna hold on to dear Lord. So you better answer me the fuck back eventually. That's yeah. how it works. Once you give me your phone number in that wow. business, because this is what happens. I call you back. How you doing, Dean? Hey, great. Listen, can I get my free pick, Dean? Listen up for a second. The guy I work for is Lee Sia. You ever hear Lee Sia? No, you haven't. He's a real estate mogul. This guy made his money in the eighties selling oil. <laughs> and he took it over to Arabville and he came back with fucking billions. Now he's bored. And he's gambling. So he's bought a piece of these fucking this society, these refs, coaches, trainers. He's on the inside. He's on the inside. He tells you what's going on. All right. For example, last night we made what? Lenny, what did we make last night? Eighty two to a thousand boss, eighty two thousand dollars on one fucking move. What did you make last night? Obviously you didn't make that. You're calling me because you're a fucking loser, okay, Dean Delray. Do me a favor. Tonight I got a fucking pick that's gonna make your fucking eyeballs pop up. What, what, what's Delray? What nationality is Delray? What is that? What is that? What are you, Irish? What are you? Yeah, man. I, I'm I'm uh, Dutch. Dutch. Okay, listen, Dutch boy, fucking paint. <laughs> I'm going to make you so much fucking money tonight, you're going to hire 12 of those little white faggots to paint your fucking house, all right? <laughs> now, do me a favor, Dean. Grab your card. We're going to start off with $300. I'm going to start you off with $300 until you make $3,000, okay? Don't bug me after that, because after that, I'm going to charge you a little more. All right, grab your card. How do you want to pay me, Dean? Oh, just my card. It's fine. Right. Oh, great. Boom. You, I got a fucking great. Mm -hmm. Lean. You got to put resistance on me, yeah. Dean. You got to fucking, you know, go, I don't know. Let me think about it and call yeah. you back. Yeah. Are you sure I'm going to win? I told my mother I was going to take her to fucking Aruba next weekend. Yeah. And I just dig into you. And I will call you. Now, even after I call you and get you to pay me the 300 no matter what happens, even if we lose a thousand, I go into you like it's like nothing happened. Yeah. Listen, I need another. You were supposed to lose that thousand, so Listen, you can get this next yeah, yeah, tip. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, they milk you to death. So now, once you tell me to go fuck myself, I don't call you. I just give this to a pay, a room next to me. The guys, because we have eighteen guys working for Lee Syak Construction Company. Yeah. But sixteen of them are superstar sports, and the other sixteen of them. A fucking Joey Diaz advantage sports. Yeah. So that fucking lead goes to two other companies. And then once we get finished with it, guess what we do? We give that same number to fucking 20 companies across the country for 50 cents on the dollar. Oh. And on that information, I already got your Amex. I got your Visa card. I got your fucking Diners Club. Oh. It really is amazing what I learned. What yeah. People, vulnerable people will fucking give you that's what, radical how fucking bosses at corporations would have their secretaries wire me money with their visa cards because they couldn't have their wives find out from their corporate accounts Jesus man. just the fucking craziest shit you've ever heard gambling man gambling is the devil 
everything is the devil. Totally. Music, totally. dick, yeah. Yeah. Reflux, drugs, yeah. Drugs, yeah. everything. Scientology, yeah. everything's the fucking Lee's devil. the devil. Lee, what are you thinking about? Two tacos, <laughs> carnitas right now? <laughs> Lee is the devil right now. Look at me. So Look like, at Paul mm. Lee. Jesus Christ. Lee, 600 milligrams was still tender. Lee, Look at this, Lee. Lee, you gamble at all? I love gambling, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, you gotta watch What are you it. into? I like Everything. Blackjack. Blackjack. Everything. Lee's a freak, and he's the wow. kiss of death, too. Yeah. No, I'm not. This You're the kiss of death. You walked away. This poor kid. <laughs> I like how, <laughs> like how fast he was. No, man, you are. You walked away. No, so this day he's he uses the same story against me, and I still I still stand that I'm right. I was started winning. He gave me money. He staked me. Very nice. Thank you. And then I started winning. He walked away. Don't walk away when someone's when when someone's winning. You do the same shit. You're I doing. want you to be a man's man. I want you to be your own man. I don't I am my own man. Your rabbit's the foot, the foot the fucking move. fell I off. I didn't know it was your fucking rabbit's foot, cutter. <laughs> <laughs> you just got shit. You got to stay there. Who told you to move? Uh, yeah, who, that's what I would say. Who told you? to You move? know that's pretty interesting that uh, <laughs> you're attacking comedy like you. Listen, man, it's all of all this shit, man. It's just a a journey. It is. It's it is. just really a journey. And if you're looking to make money, get out of it now. If you're looking to become a millionaire or be on the cover of something, get out of it now. If you're just looking to do your journey and pay for your bills and sustain yourself, yeah. how happy are you? You figure wow. out how to get insurance. You know, I mean, we came in a time when we're very fortunate. People in America today can't, it's very hard for them to get any fucking type of insurance. You know? Totally. I got that SAG insurance, and I remember when I got it, I'm like, why does these pain the ass people keep sending me letters? Yeah. You know, like I thought it was an inconvenience. I didn't yeah. need insurance. I right. was invincible. I was never going to need insurance. This fucking, fucking weak people. Fuck. That insurance does good now. It that saves. shit is God. So it's just. Uh, I tell you, Joey, it's, it's so funny because uh, I'm coming up in about three weeks, will be seven years. It's gone by so fucking. The sobriety fast. part of it. Just, I'm saying doing comedy. Oh, oh comedy. I've been, yeah, I've been doing comedy seven years and three weeks here. Uh, told, uh, what was it? It was uh, December 6th. It's the first time I went on stage. So like a month away. And, and I think about how fast seven years have gone by and how much fun I've had and all these new friends I have. You know what I mean? Well, you've impressed a lot of comedians with your heart. And you're very kind, and you're very sweet. You're not like these fucking egotistical guys that you already saw a taste of life when you got involved with comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, you've been doing comedy seven years right now at this yep, point? Okay, yeah, seven years. So, Wow. I didn't know Dick. I thought I was the king. I had booked the pilot for CBS. I yeah. had a Taco Bell commercial, and I had a role in basketball. And I thought I had the answer. And I had this pilot at CBS. And I thought the pilot, they blew smoke up everybody's ass. It was yeah. uh, the guy who got the money. They paid him $3 million to direct the fucking series. Why would they pay somebody if they're not going to pick up the fucking show? Yeah. CBS didn't pick it up. It's so, crazy. But I was at the store dying, Dean Dari. In 98, I was at the store getting a beating from Don Herrera, um, A.J. Jamal. A.J. Jamal. That was his fucking name. Wow. A.J. Jamal was a black kid that was uh, very clean with dreadlocks. Yeah. And he went up there and they fell in love with him so much, King Kong couldn't fucking follow him. Wow. It was weird. And then she would give me two spots on the weekends, one in the fucking main room following Dom Herrera to die. Yeah. And then I'd have to creep over and follow A.J. Jamal in the original in the room. Just two, for another two funerals? Beat. Two funerals for the same <laughs> fat fuck. At that point, I'd have the coke already waiting for me so I could just go in the bathroom, cry, and snort. No. But right after the fucking original room. Seven never, years in? Seven years in, I was struggling, man, dying. I remember I signed with a manager, and he sent me to Jacksonville, Florida, the headline. Yeah. And between you and I, it was an ego. I looked down on him. I looked down at this club when I walked in there. For yeah. some reason or another, I just said, uh, ah, you know, I'm not into this club. Yeah. And I walked in, and I looked at the schedule, and I go, holy shit, this is a real club. Oh, yeah, you saw people who... Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. people out of L.A., people who've been in movies, and I go, holy shit. And I went up there, and I started dying. Oh, no. 
on the 35 minute mark. Oh. Because I lose 15 minutes with the regional shit. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You that, lose 15 that, minutes. You've been the down at the Grove? Shit. I was at the Grove. Boom. Yeah. Gone. All that yeah. material's gone. gone. The 170. Yeah. The yeah. Armenians. Yeah, the yeah. fucking uh, oh. the furniture stores in North Hollywood. The I was just store. talking to Ari about that, you know? We you lose just... all that shit, you know? So right away, you have 35 minutes, and here you are in this fucking city. You're trying to look good for this fucking... Booker, who's going to be there Thursday night, by the way. Totally. Then he's going away, and you're up there at the 35-minute mark, and you're starting to improvise. Yeah. You're improvising. Like, so what do you guys do for a living? It's a fucking slow death. Oh. So nobody could fucking tell me nothing about comedy. Yeah. The sun, I got here when? 90s, what are we, 216 right yep. now? Yep, coming to here, an end. I got, look at this poor bastard. I got here yeah, in, two yeah. se- in 207, 97. Uh-huh. And that first year, I signed with a manager. I booked a pilot for CBS. I started going on the road a little bit. As an MC, I was on the road. Right. But I had a manager who was a booker at Creative Entertainment out of North Carolina. There's something else now. They book Charlotte now. Have you been to Charlotte? No. Uh, I was in uh, Durham, North Carolina with Burr a couple weeks ago. That's a theater, though. Yeah. You know, this is a club in Charlotte. Gotcha. It's a great fucking club. It's oh, been wow. there forever. Still there, huh? Still there. They run it. But they have the room in the Bermuda. Mm-hmm. So they they book Jamaica. If you want to go to Jamaica and do comedy, they book it. Wow. It's 300 a week. 300 a week. And they fly you down there. <laughs> All right. You're there for two weeks. You bring your family. Oh. But you're getting 300 a week. Oh, man. I'm the good. The MC gets like 2250 Well, 22 <laughs> And you can't curse. You can't do nothing like that. Because yeah. they'll, they'll whisk you right off the fucking island. Oh, yeah. That's no it's good for me. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Comedy is, you know, it's... it's uh, I I was talking to uh, a friend of mine on a car ride up. I headlined Friday night in Fresno. And, you know, you spend all these years doing the feature spot of 20. And 20 is just crushing. And, and you, you got to watch out because you can get a little fucking delusional. Like, man, I'm fucking, this, this, I'm getting good here. But that's nothing. It's the hour of going out and headlining. That's a whole different fucking whole different art. Animal. Whole different animal. So it's, what you do is you book yourself in C rooms. Yeah. You get a list of fucking C rooms, and you tell them, "Listen, I'll take you." What you do, and you do this for yourself. It's not for the dough. You're gonna break even. Right. You're gonna because they're gonna give you eight hundred for the week. Okay, and that's all they do. Sorry. Yeah. If Jesus came in here, we do eight hundred for the week. We know our audience. We do ten dollar tickets on Saturdays and twelve fifty on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. Then there's towns like that. Like, it's you, a C you, room. It's just the, what are you gonna do? Nobody goes there anymore. But you're gonna go there. You're gonna go there from scratch and do that once a month. But train yourself to do seventy. Seventy. Even if you're lullabying them. Oh yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Even if they're fucking falling asleep in front of you and fucking. You're getting that getting ice in the, the blood. Even if they heckle you and go, when is this going to end? Yeah, you know, yeah. All yeah. that shit. Yeah. That's where you really cut your teeth. Yeah. Because that's how I cut my teeth. The people yelling, hey, man, what the fuck? You know who heckled me one time? Who? Rogan. Yeah? I was bombing so bad at the store. And Whoa. Rogan heckled me in the very beginning. Mm. Wow. I didn't talk to him for like a month, but I go, he had every right to heckle me. What did he say? I'm in the back there and I'm throwing these fucking, fucking curveballs that I think are brilliant. Yeah. At the store. Mm. I got an 11 o'clock spot. The room is filled. Yeah. Filled. People coming in to watch. And I'm on stage dying. And after eight minutes, I go, boy. This is killing me. And all of a sudden, Rogue was in the back, and he goes, it's fucking killing me. Oh. And the room started laughing, and after that, there wasn't one bit of fucking, oh. there was not a fucking line of funniness after that. Wow. Oh, man, you are just like, oh. My God, I was embarrassed. Oh. You know? I mean, you, you just bomb, man. Yeah. I just bombed for the first special. The first show, I thought I bombed. Oh, on the first, uh, on the last first week at the episode. shoot? Oh, I couldn't keep it together. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started doing old jokes and backpedaling. Then I had a, and then once you lose the war, fucking, yeah. 
you just tap out. You hope that the second show oh. goes a lot better and you go back to technique and you go back to what you've learned and yeah, what you're yeah. strong with and that's exactly how it worked out. What happened? Do you think you took the first show lightly like I got this? No. Or? Let me tell you what I did. Yeah. No humanity. Oh. Sometimes, man, I, I go on stage and I want to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. I want to appear to be like Seinfeld. Yeah. But that don't work for me. Yeah. I got to be who the fuck you are. You always have to be who the fuck you are in your life. Lee, was I not me in the second show? It was, a, uh, and everyone thought, everyone was like, oh, good joke, good show. But yeah, the second show was amazing. It was just something that, it's 25 years. Yeah. That's it. This is what we do. Yep. I was sitting there for three hours stewing, and I heard Willie and Willie going, you know what, Joe, you're a good storyteller. And I said, you know what? I came out there fucking throwing heat. Let me do something different. For the second show, I went out there and said, man, say a story. And I just told a story. Who the fuck knows what the fuck the story was? Wow. And then from there, I took it into the set. And now you show humanity. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah. They know what time it is. Yeah. You know, it was just sometimes. And that's why I didn't like doing blow all those years. That's what frustrated me the most about snorting cocaine and trying to do stand-up comedy. That no matter how good the material was while I was doing blow, that fucking fury would never unleash. Yeah. That fury at the comedy store that I unleash sometimes. Yeah. I know yeah. it's only 18 minutes and if I have a heart attack, it's not going to be. Yeah. I only got six minutes to yeah. walk out. I, have, I could die on the fucking parking <laughs> yeah, lot. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I go strong in a club. I know I got an hour up there. Yeah. You know, you get all fired well, up. I've been with him, man. The yeah. face gets purple and yeah. shit. You know, no, no, but you don't tell me. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you fucking go off. You know, you're really feeling this joke right now. You yeah. Know? You're really feeling the story. So at the store, you go up there, you got to give it everything the fuck you got sometimes. I always do, man. And uh, I don't take that place light at all. No, no, and you're going to bomb. Everybody yeah. fucking bombs, man. No matter what you do, you bomb. If you're a contractor, one day I'm going to come in and go, Dean, today I got to do a bunch of shit. I'm fucking the secretary today. Can I leave you here alone? Yeah. Sure enough, there's going to be two things you're going to fuck up. Is he, He's going to go, I knew I shouldn't have left you alone. Yeah. And you're going to feel shitty about it. But you know what? You're going to learn a lesson. And he's going to and he's gonna bust your balls all the time. Yeah. You know about it. Lee, how you feeling over there? You all right? You're seeing things? I got to go. I'm not. Huh? I'm off to the store. Very nice. I, I, I mean... <laughs> no, wait, hold on. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing like almost things yet. What kind uh, of, almost things yet. What kind of things you're seeing, cocksucker? I love it. Because I'm seeing almost things yet. What a yet. shame. We had John tonight. We didn't even talk about music last so, time. It's all right, though. Last time we played videos, we fucking yeah, yeah. played videos. We hit people fucking hard. It's all right, though, because sometimes, uh, you know, I mean, it's just organic. That's why I like to come on here. It's wherever <laughs> it goes, it goes. Seven yeah. years. I am so proud of you. Thank you, man. Uh, two, three or four reasons. Number one, you're a sweetheart of a guy. You're never showing up for a handout. You always do the work. You don't mind doing the work. Listen, I'll ride a bicycle to the gig if I can open up for you. Tell uh, me. Uh, you're very, you want to do this. You're at an age that a lot of people don't think of doing dick. Yeah, yeah, 50. You're at an age, a lot of people go, let me just go to Subway and steam it out till I get social at 55 and <laughs> shit. We're both at that age where we could have tapped out a while ago yeah. still. I don't want to tap out ever. I no. never went to get on government to help. Right? My mom didn't come here to fucking put me on free fire. I'd rather rob you before I go get free fucking. I, I just worked all my life, you know what I mean? I can't imagine not working, you know? And, and like comedy is just like. Well, listen, you didn't also start this when you were 23. Yeah. Which meant that you were at the bar and there was a hangout. And I'll go back with. Red band and drink till eight in the morning. And yeah, 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 this is business. Yeah, yeah. This at, at one point and 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 you, whatever you're doing in your life, uh, you party and you you cut corners and you get away with little things, but to see the big picture in any career, in any fucking career, whether it's real estate, it's when you put your full focus. Yeah, you know, totally. and you could do the math yourself. You're not ignorant. Look at the time when you've been sober. And you've done your work, and look at the time. My work is fucking tremendous. I mean, I always had a great work work ethic, but no matter what, the the ninety percent of my mind was how I was going to score that next rock that night. Yeah, exactly. That was always a little bit more important than being yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I scored the rock, then I could be funny, Jack. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's a different fucking ball yeah. game. Yep. I don't have that enigma in front of me anymore. I don't yeah. have to wake up to that. I wake up to being funny or writing this today or. So, I, dog, seven years, 
You're doing great things. You're fearless. Yeah. I've never heard you complain. You're fearless, which, listen, any fucking career is the number one thing. That's it. Plain and simple. Fearless. I'll fucking go down there on Sunday. That's why I know there's a lot of show even volunteer for no more because yeah. it's too yeah. much. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So no, man. Keep doing what the fuck you're doing. You're out there. Thank you, man. You play your music. You ride your motorcycle. Dean, uh, you're making a living. You know, you're yeah. putting away a couple of dollars here and there when you can. You catch a breather. What else you want in life, Dean? That's it, man. I just what did else? comedy for a fucking... 20 days in New York. I just look at that like, wow. And you stayed in the apartment on the Lower East Side. Yeah, right. You woke up to bagels. Nobody asked you for a $20 bill. Ari's got more. You know, he don't give a fuck. Ari ain't He's great. To, Ari's family. He's not going to say, listen, just clean the place and don't leave no rubbers or whatever. Right? <laughs> He's you know, so he, great, that he guy. He leaves man. you weed. There's food in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. Ari's fucking family. So, you know what? When you have these advantages, you have to take advantage of these fucking advantages. Mm -hmm. Go to New York and even, hey, listen, who the fuck am I to tell you not to experience New York in December? No, oh, man, I'm going. Oh, when it's freezing. It's fucking, I'll take the animal. And like, this call, sucks. And you'll call me and go, Joey, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. When that wind goes in that subway, subway station. Yeah, just, ah. even, and the rats are like, fuck you. Yeah, and yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. I had that in August. I was there in this fucking four million degrees. There was an incinerator, man, just down in the subway. Showing up at shows, your pants are just wet. No, no, no. There's no way to live. Oh, oh, Listen, oh. I'm going to tell you a true story. Yeah. There were two concerts that I walked out of there, and it was a horror show. But the main mm -hmm. concert was ACDC at the Palladium, August 2nd. 1980 or 81, the second night they started. They always opened that tour in Philadelphia and yeah. the Palladium in New York. I kid you not, bro. I had sweat down to my knees on my jeans. The the the, the belt buckle, the yeah. belt loop there, yeah, yeah. that inch around your waist yep. was covered with sweat. Oh. The t-shirt I had on, the people next to me, it just smelled like shoes at the Palladium. It's brutal. Brutal. That you know, fucking humidity. That is humidity. Brutal. The cocaine would melt. Oh, 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 it's just gone. And the seal meal. Remember those seal meals? They'd you, just be gone. You would cut the cocaine, Lee, and move it, and the whole thing would move with the razor blade. Just gone. And you go, you know what? We're done. We got to snort it before. If not, we lose it. Ghost coke. The humidity fucking loses it. I'm going to do some shout outs. If All you right. got to go, I got to go. Go do your Thank thing. Thank you so much. Me and Lee will close this motherfucker. Love out. you guys. I love Thank you, you for guys, coming man. on a Sunday night oh. edition. Oh, God. Of yeah. the fucking church and what's happening the now. The church. Sorry we didn't really cover a lot of music tonight. Well, I'll be next back next month. we'll bring Rain in and we'll fucking yeah. do uh Get that, down on that Blind Melon. You know, I'm going to listen to that Blind Melon because I did like him. I really did Please do. Like do. Check out the record Soup and the song Galaxy. It's incredible. Thank you, I love you, you cocksucker. You know your way out. There's a door out there. Yeah. You know how to slide out. Thank you. We'll talk during the week. Thomas Hannington. Sean Thomas. Jordan Hutchinson, Alex Carter. Let me do this again because there was a lot of movement here. Thomas Hannington, Sean Thomas, Jordan Hutchinson, Alex Carter, Stephen Cariego, Johnny Papalia, Philip Rusty Buscelli, and Jason Seagars. Who the fuck is better than you on a Monday morning? You understand me? At least you're getting thought about. Somebody's thinking about you, cocksucker. What's going on, Lee? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, well, you're going to talk to me like that. Tell me. You know what? I'm feeling like a fucking animal in heat. A freak without warning. No, I'm trying to figure out how I feel. Um, it, it, It's not really kicking. It's kicking in, but nothing really crazy yet. I don't, another piece? I don't want you to say I gave you a fucking a Fugazi piece. Take a chance. Columbus did. What are you going to do? You got nothing to do tomorrow. What are you going to do? Other than, other than live, uh, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? No. You got nothing to do tomorrow. Take a chance. Columbus did. Lose your. Oh shit. Is that you? No, it's not me. That's you. Fuck that. Who's Pat texting you? Shit. Look at you. That's Mama. She's watching. <laughs> oh shit. She's watching the show. She knows you're fucking hiding. Fuck. No. You didn't save her star. She's got you on the eyeball of debt. That time you brought her into the office, she bugged the office. You see what I'm saying? 
What's up, Lee? Give me those things, will you? Well, okay. Look at you. You're having a little heart attack over there. You got anxiety. I love it. It's a typical Sunday night here at the church office. I'm happy you motherfuckers tapped in on a Monday morning. Uh, great week coming up. Halloween and shit next weekend. Everybody's, <laughs> I'm going to be in Las Vegas Friday night and Saturday night at the South Point with my man uh, Steve Simone and I guess Larry now since he's unemployed or something. Something poor happened to my man Larry, so we're going to have to chip in and get him a fucking car. He's going to be the Uber driver of the fucking year, my brother Larry. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about that? I love it. He said, yeah, yeah he needs a new car to do Uber. So Yeah, we're going to have to chip in and get him a fucking nice Corvette or something so he can do Uber or get him a special Larry fucking token lair Uber car and shit. You know what I'm saying? How you feeling over there, Lee? What do you got planned for this week, cocksucker? Everything's out the window now. <laughs> I went back to jiu-jitsu. I'm very happy. I went Saturday and today. My breathing is off, but fuck it. I'm going to keep going. Since my back, I didn't want to overdo it. I went a little bit both days just to really, tomorrow I go to the class. I'll probably do the drills like I did today and get thrown up in the air and shit like that and just get loose, and uh, it's great to be back. I took that week off, guys, and I got to tell you something, man. I only did two podcasts, and I went to that meeting. And I spent time with my family, and I didn't, I didn't even open up a comedy notebook. Did you know that? I'm not going to open up a comedy notebook till tomorrow morning. How long has it been since you've taken that long off? Uh, last December. I took a two-week layoff off after the New Year's show because I couldn't do it. I couldn't say those jokes anymore. I was fucking dying inside. So I went up there, April. Remember we went to the year started at fucking Flappers. I warmed up at Flappers on a Tuesday night and fucking ripped it up nicely. You know, I hadn't been on stage, and sometimes it's good to take a little breather. Sometimes you make good strides. I had a good dad. I had a way better dad jujitsu than I thought I was going to have. I did one thing that was impressive, at least for me. I lasted in one thing. I took my fucking little protein water, and I went home. You know me, dog. I don't fuck around, dog. Your cardio survived? My cardio is... That one week, remember that fucking, before I shot that special, like a week before the special, I started smoking cigarettes. Like I would smoke fucking little, uh, those ultra light, disgusting, they were disgusting guys. But for some reason, I wanted to get everything sharp. I wanted not to forget There's something in my head. Like I told you, when I used to go to auditions, the fucking character for me started when I went in the shower. So when I did the special, I was going to go back to Chicago. I don't know. I wanted to feel fucking dirty without feeling dirty. So I bought a pack of Marlboro Ultralights one night, and they are the most disgusting fucking things. I came to a conclusion last week that the worst things on this list, and every once in a while, you want me to lie to you and tell you if I'm on a fucking flight and I don't have a star, that I won't get a fucking uh, Doers and Ginger Ale? Do you want me to lie to you and tell you I'm not a Doers and Ginger Ale guy? Do you want me to lie to you and tell you that I'm not a fucking... Sometimes I'll just drink an Irish cream. An Irish Bailey's on the rocks. That's it, yeah. That's right. I'm not going to lie to nobody. Last week in Chicago, I had a Frangelico, or whatever the fuck it was. You had a Frangelico. Frangelico with Irish cream with some ice cubes and a little cream in that. I'm not gonna, I like all that type of shit. I don't want to get hammered. But you know what? Whenever I drink alcohol, whether it's one shot or two shot on the plane, when I get home and I drink water and stuff like that the next morning, I feel okay. I don't feel the alcohol. Whatever I'm deciding to do, and I'm going to walk that day or run or do kettlebells, I feel okay. But I got to tell you something. You smoke fucking cigarettes, the next day you feel like fucking death. You really do. And I came back that night, I threw them in the thing, and I didn't fucking smoke another cigarette. And that was it. I just wanted it before the special to calm me down when I was there. I didn't want to do alcohol, and I didn't want to have 22 stars in my fucking system. Between the reefer and the fucking cigarettes, it calmed me the fuck down. Really. Cigarettes calmed me down? I've never smoked. Something in my world. Something for some reason made me pull them up. And you know what, Willie? The result was great. It the was. The final that. result. And what did I do? I threw the fucking cigarettes out that night. And that was a week ago. That was eight days ago. No fucking problem. Nobody got their feelings hurt. My lungs are tip-tap too, Magoo. I did the stand master that fucking day at the hotel. So I'm good, man. It's amazing that you can go in and out of that uh, addiction so easily. There's no addiction. Still... There's no addiction. It's fucking disgusting. 
I want you to smoke one time in your life, whether it's a cigar. I've smoked cigars. They are the most disgusting thing in the world. I love these people who smoke a cigar, and I want to ask them, look, pull them in the corner and go, tell me the truth. You really like smoking this shit? You really like that taste in your fucking mouth when you breathe on people? I got to <laughs> smell that shit. Who's breathing on people? Well, people who smoke cigars breathe on you and shit. They want to come up close and talk to you like they're Johnny Mafia. And they want to hit you with that fucking, that fucking cigar of death breath smell in your face. Like, I need that shit. Get the fuck out of here. Let me tell you something. Uh, it's, the, it's the holiday season. And, uh, you know, we got a great podcast, man. And we have a select group. And uh, I have a great couple agents. And they contact me every, like, 30 days. And they give me a list of people that uh, they're marketing for now. And they say to me, you know, Joey, look into this. And the people, I'll say, you know what? Yeah, I like that. Tell them to send me a case of that or do this or do that. And eventually we all, me and Lee, sit down. And, we, you know, I don't want to ever bring something on here to you people that you're going to look at me and go, Joey, what the fuck? What the fuck? Number one, you're unique. You don't walk like everybody. You don't talk like everybody. You don't sleep like everybody. So why is your mattress one size fits all? Why? Because a custom mattress will cost you five to $10,000 until now. Introducing, ready for this? The Helix Sleep, where you can buy mattress online. Customized for you for hundreds of dollars Instead of thousands, all right? You go to helixsleep.com. Answer simple questions based on four key preferences. And the result will be a custom sleep profile used to build you the most comfortable mattress you'll ever sleep on. You dig? Your mattress will arrive at your door in about a week. And shipping is 100% free, all right? And for the couples, Helix customizes each side of the mattress, all right? Helix customers report a 30% improvement in overall sleep quality. You got 100 nights to try it out, and if you don't love it, they pick it up for free and give you 100% refund, no questions asked. That's why everyone from GQ Magazine to Forbes are all talking about the Helix Sleep. Do me a favor right now. Go to helixsleep.com slash joey, and you'll get $50 off your entire order, right? That's helixsleep.com slash joey helixsleep.com slash joey i'm gonna give you fifty dollars off your order all right listen if you don't sleep you can't go out there and sling dick that's the bottom fucking line all right believe me if you want if you think you can sleep four hours a night on the couch and be tiptoe magoo the next day it's not gonna work it only works for a little while give helix sleep a try right now listen i just got this in the mail I tried the blueberry one. You know, I'm not an expert on waters. I do know what I like and I do know what I don't like. I don't like drinking a water where the taste is overwhelming. And I don't like drinking a water where the taste is too sweet, where it's too not, you know, you can't taste it's it. It's not natural. It's not natural. And then there's that one flavor. I just tried this today, the, the blueberry. I think it's the blueberry. It was delicious. Do you understand me? You know you should drink eight glasses of water a day. But who really does? Coffee, soda, energy drinks. Why don't you drink, just drink more water? Because it's bland and you want something that tastes good. Here's the solution. Drink hit water instead. Listen, I'm like you guys. Sometimes I'm drinking water and I feel like a prisoner. I don't like water sometimes. But if you want to drink something that's healthy and at the same time get your fix, this is it, my friend. You know you should drink eight glasses of water a day. But again, hemp water was started by Kara Golden. A few years ago, as the, after having a fourth child, she was overweight. She had terrible acne and felt awful. She was drinking 10 diet sodas a day. You know who that sounds like, Lee? Instead of drinking water. Because water was boring. But other, what other options did she have? Juices full of calories and there's the no calorie drinks of garbage. That's why she started Hint Water. Hint Water is pure water infused with a taste of fresh fruit. fruit. Hint Water, drinking water, isn't boring. They have flavors to suit your palate. Watermelon, peach, mango, grapefruit, and many more. No sugars, no chemicals, just great tasting, all natural, fruit-flavored water. Both Health and Self magazines have named Hint Water 
for the best flavored water, and they know how important drinking plenty of water is to your health. You know what? Let's open up one right now. In fact, that's what I had before. Me, I'm thinking blueberry. It's watermelon. Let's taste this together. It's chilled. You know what, guys? This is delicious. Hint is pure water infused with fresh fruit. No sugar, no chemicals, just great tasting, all natural, fruit-flavored water. Both Health and Self magazines have named Hint Water the best flavored water, and they know how important drinking water is every day. Do me a favor right now, okay? I just drank some watermelon infused with... It's water infused with watermelon and the other natural flavors from non-GMO plants. There you go. I can't see with these glasses, guys. I'm so sorry. Zero calories, unsweetened, best enjoyed chilled. Born in San Francisco. I love this stuff, all right? And right now, get a single variety pack shipped directly to your door, including three bottles of each of Hint's most popular flavors, pineapple, watermelon, crisp apple, and blackberry. See, I did have the blackberry. I'm hallucinating here. Normally $24. I'll tell you what we're going to do. For only $15 at drinkhint.com slash church. Again, normally $24. We're going to get it for $15 at drinkhint.com slash church. That's drinkhint, H-I-N-T dot com slash church. Drinkhint.com slash church. Give it a try. It's delicious. The watermelon was good and the blackberry was good. That's how we're rolling here. Lee, what are you looking at? You're all confused over there. As usual, you guys been knowing, you've been following me on the church here for how long. You know I love you with all my heart. I appreciate you guys, all right? A uh, couple weeks ago, we got this thing. Uh, did you hook it up yet, the CISO? Oh, yeah. My wife hooked it up to the Roku. My wife loves it. She watches the Saturday Night Lives on there, the old Saturday Night Lives. I came in the other night, I got to tell you, as much as sometimes I don't like, like Saturday Night Live, I was kind of laughing, and she told me this was uh, part of... The CISO. Packet, the CISO. And I'm like, really? I didn't even know this. I did not even know this shit, okay? Yeah, and I got CISO for the Doug Stanhope special a couple weeks ago. Is that what you got it for? That's what I got it for a couple weeks ago. And they have a couple. They have some uh, original programming from Jonah Ray, I believe. And they, they have a lot of great original programming. And it's just they're just going to keep having more and more. It's, uh, it's a lot of really cool. And they have hours of specials. Well, all I know is one thing. I'm very happy that my special is going to air on there December 8th on CISO. Now, what's the best thing you've bought for three ninety nine? dollars I bought CISO. CISO has nearly endless supply of top-shelf comedy, literally months of worth of exclusive originals, face-melting stand-up, and next day, late night, and great catalog of classics. CISO is the place for comedy. They won't tell you how amazing they are, but we will. CISO is amazing. It's comedy for comedy nerds by comedy nerds. Like I said, the other night we were watching Sign Night Live. It was hilarious. I mean, it, you know what? I didn't when I Sign Night Live was coming out. I wasn't really fucking into it because I was getting high and shit like this. Mm -hmm. But it was tremendous. CISO, spelled S E E S O, is the new ad-free streaming service bringing you hilarious original series, hand-picked classics. Weeks of stand-up specials and more. Bringable comedy anytime, anywhere. CISO. Every episode of SNL, including new episodes the day after the air. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers the day after. And they even have classics like Dirty Rock, Parks and Rec, and Saved by the Bell. Even British comedies like the original Office with R Ricky Gervais, the entire Monty Python catalog, the It Crowd, and the Steve Coogan as Alan Partridge. Discover the next big names in comedy and watch the icons before they make it big like Louis C.K. when he had hair, Hannibal Barris, Chelsea Peretti, Amy Schumer, Bo Bar Burnham, and yours truly, Uncle fucking Joey Diaz on December 8th, bitches. So if you're serious about comedy, gotta give try the seesaw, all right? Stream it online, anywhere, any place, virtually Unbelievable. CISO is ad-free, and it's $3.99 per month. 
That's less you paid for the lat ate artesian cold brewed coffee you're holding right now, like a half a fruitcake. And right now, my listeners can try CISO for two months when you use promo code Joey at checkout. Okay, again, for you guys that are fucking deaf, my listeners can get CISO for free for two months when you use promo code Joey at checkout. And guess what that gets you? Even if you get it today, which is what? October 25th? That means November 25th. That means December 25th. That means you get to watch Uncle Joey's special for fucking free, cocksuckers. So do me a favor. Go to CISO.com right now. CISO.com right now to sign up for two months free with promo code Joey. J-O-E-Y at the checkout. That's CISO.com promo code Joey. That means you get to see my special for free. And I know you're going to watch it because you know I love you and you love me and we love everybody else. All right. So one more time, go check out CISO.com slash Joey. Go to HelixSleep.com slash Joey. And I'll tell you what, this fucking hint water is not too bad. Lee, I got to give you one. You know what, man? It's nice and light. So do me a favor right now, all right? This is the real deal, holy feel. Go to drink, no, go to hint.com slash church, all right? That's drinkhint.com slash church and normally $24 I'm going to give you $15 at drinkhint.com slash church listen we'll see you guys Wednesday have a great night stay black thanks for opening up Monday morning was remember it's your motherfucking week write your goals do your 22 push ups smoke a bone and get out of the house sling dick and giving out bubblegum cocksuckers thank you for listening